meeting of today's Illinois Board of Review hearings for today, March 14th, 2023. Uh, we appreciate your patience. We had a rather extensive uh, executive session. Many of the matters that are listed today have been addressed. Uh, so we will spend a bit of time this morning before we hear our first case going through the list and uh, resolving a number of matters. And so what I'd ask if there is one person who's been assigned from the law department to uh, report out on cases that have been withdrawn or there's a request for continuance or otherwise uh, agreed upon. Who would that be today? Good afternoon, Chairman Woodson. Jim Kelly on behalf of the city. Good afternoon, Ms. Kelly. Just one moment, sir. Uh, by the way, welcome to the group. Uh, you look new to us. You may the welcome. Uh, the second thing, the board will need to introduce itself as well as the other panelists so that we will know who's with us today. Again, I'm Kenneth Woodson, board chair. Hi, uh, Ralph Pincus, board member. Steve Roger Pettit. S oh. Go ahead, Steve. Steve Pettit, board member. My apologies. Roger S. Tennant, senior board member. Ken Washington, board member. Ryan Thank McSherry, you. board counsel. Richard Wade, board administrator. Thank you very much. Okay, everyone else, as you know, uh, has been muted principally because there's a lot of background uh, noise, potentially some of which you cannot control. And so in order to not disrupt the hearings, we've asked everyone to remain muted until your case is called. And the board administrator will work with you to make sure that you have uh, access to the hearing. Again, Mr. Kelly, if you would unmute yourself and begin the report out. Sure, so the, the first one that we have is number five, HA 2022-002. 232-641 North 56th Street. That case has been moot complied. Moot complied? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, actually, what we could do, sir, if you would just uh, call the individual's name in case they are on the hearing so they will hear it and respond. Sure, okay, that one was Tara Creighton. Okay, and I would ask uh, all who are on the, um, the hearing today, if your name is called, uh, please listen closely because you will hear the disposition of your case. If it's moot or moot complied, that means that in fact, it's been resolved. So you can uh, go home, you can stop listening, participating if you choose to. This is a public hearing, you may stay on as long as you like, but your matter has been resolved. Uh, if it's uh, continued or withdrawn, uh, you can check in with the uh, law department and or the LNI's administrative office to find out uh, the next step. Uh, but that's essentially where we are, okay? All right, thank you, Mr. Kelly. Thank you. The next one is number 8HA 2022-002028-3830 Pens Grove Road, Viola Doe, Moot Complied. Moot Complied. Okay, thank you. Uh, number 11HA 2022-001984. 2650 Sorrento Road, Clarence and Andrea Brookins, most moot complied. Moot complied, thank you. Number 14, HA 2022-002357, uh, 1249 Point Breeze Avenue, Adelson Rivas, moot complied. Moot complied, okay. Number 15, HA 2022-000, 388-1953 South Bonsall Street, Elham Bashuti, Moot Complied. Moot Complied, thank you. Um, number 16, HA 2022-002-088-2740 Federal Street, Colin Laren, Moot Complied. Moot Complied, thank you. Um, for number 19, there's an agreement, and I would I can turn it over to one of my colleagues to explain that. Okay. Good afternoon, members of the board. Mary Costello on behalf of the City of Philadelphia. Uh, there has been a 30-day stay of enforcement agreement for this matter that I did forward to the board. Okay. And so your preference today is for the board to confirm uh, that agreement, correct? Yes. Okay. 30-day stay? But Mr. Chairman, should we be sure to recite the, the case number and so yes. on? Oh, yes, yes I'm that... sorry. It's appeal HA 2022 
for 2137 East Dolphin Street. It's Nicholas Campion. He's doing business as AC Auto Repairs Incorporated. Okay, is he also represented by counsel today? He is represented by counsel, James M. Donovan, um, and he signed the agreement. He was CC'd on our email, and I do not believe he's able to appear at the hearing today. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, uh, then uh, we will poll the board with regard to HA-2022-002346, uh, 2137 East Dolphin Street, Nicholas Campion doing business as AC Auto Repairs, Inc., uh, City of Firm, as per the agreement, with a 30-day stay of enforcement. City of Firm, per agreement, with 30-day stay. City of Firm, per the agreement, 30-day stay of enforcement. City of Firm, per the agreement of a 30-day stay of enforcement. City of Firm, per the agreement, with a 30-day stay of enforcement. Thank you very much. Okay, back to you, Mr. Kelly. Thank you. The next one is number... 21 HA 2022 241 East Armat Street, TNT Auto Inspection LLC. That case is moot. Moot. Okay. Thank you. All righty. And the next one, uh, number 25, I would turn it back over to Ms. Costello. Okay. Good afternoon, members of the board. For 25 HA 2022-000292-114 Roxburgh Avenue, there's been a 60-day stay of enforcement agreement that was forwarded to the board. Okay. And the appellants are, would you put that in the record, please? The appellants are Lisa K. Miller, uh, who is the executor of the estate that owns the property, and Joy Griffin, who has power of attorney in regards to the property. And I believe that they are both on the call. Okay, Lisa K. Miller and Joy Griffin. Are you currently, if you're here, please uh, just identify yourself, please. Yes, I'm Lisa Miller, execu executor of the estate. Okay. I'm Joy yeah. Griffin. Okay, oh, Ms. Griffin. Yeah. And <laughs> okay, Ms. Griffin, your, and your relationship to this matter? Um, I, I currently have the POA, but I'm um, uh, an heir of the property. Okay, but you uh, have the uh, power of attorney? Yes. Okay, all right. Mr. Mr. Woodson, I yes. forwarded the copy of the power of attorney as well as the appointment for the executor of the state to the board as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, and before we call the vote, I just want to inquire about Ms. Miller and Ms. Griffin. Both of you have uh, signed off on the agreement with the law department? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, now we will poll the board um, with regard to HA-2022-000292-114 Roxborough Avenue, Lisa K. Miller and Joy Griffin. Uh, city affirmed per the agreement with a 60-day stay of enforcement. City affirmed per the terms of an agreement with a 60-day stay of enforcement. City affirmed per the agreement with a 60-day stay of enforcement. City affirmed per the agreement of a 60-day stay of enforcement. City affirmed per the agreement with a 60-day stay of enforcement. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank ladies, you. you may stay with us or you may go back and do other things for the balance of the day. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Kelly, anything else? Yeah, so number 27, HA 2022-002-176, that's uh, 1627 North Marshall Street, um, Mayor DeBoer, uh, moot complied. Moot complied, thank you. Number 31, HA 2022-000157, 6450 Le Lebebau Avenue, Igor and Dreska. That's uh, actually listed in error. It's the same as number one on the list. Oh, okay. All right. So it's listed in error. Okay. Um, and then for number 34, I would turn it back over to Ms. Costello. Good afternoon, members of the board. Um, this matter has also come to an agreement and the agreement has been forwarded to the board. This is an AIU matter um, and the violations were originally for fines totaling 3,000 and an agreement has been reached for fines totaling um, $1,500. Okay, would you mind putting the details of the case on the record please in terms of number and et cetera? 
Sure. Number 34 is HA 2022-001281. That's 1825 West Diamond Street uh, for Gerald Boyce. And this is a case through AIU where an agreement has been reached for a fine amount. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is anyone here representing uh, the interests of uh, 1825 West Diamond Street? Anyone present? Okay. Uh, we will then poll the board regarding HA-2022-001281, 1825 West Diamond Street, Gerald Boyce, City of Firm, further agreement between the parties, including a $1,500 fine. City affirmed per the agreement of the parties, including a $1,500 fine. City affirmed per the agreement with a $1,500 fine. City affirmed per the agreement with a $1,500 fine. City affirmed per the agreement with a $1,500 fine. Thank you very much. Okay, Ms. Kelly. Thank you. The Last uh, city, or I'm sorry, the last moot complied that I have is uh, number 38 HA 2022-001674, 622 East Lippincott Street, LNR Mechanical Inc. Moot complied. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and I do believe that a few of my colleagues have uh, follow up in terms of continuances. And I also just want okay. to note for the board that for number 35 um, HA 2022 zero 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 nine six four i believe that the witness the city's witness um ne needs to be excused at, at 3 30 today so just in terms of schedule. okay okay we will keep that in mind and uh if we will do what we can to accommodate okay all ready uh let's do this so that we don't have any confusion if uh there are additional uh matters we put on the record if if just do it in order based on the uh, the published uh, list for today. So please speak up uh, in that order. If you're, if you're number closest to number one, uh, please uh, speak up. I'm referencing the law department. Yes, good afternoon, Board Dejanay Davis on behalf of the city of Philadelphia. Um, this is actually in reference to uh, case number one on the list, uh, appeal number HA 2022-0015. Seven sixty one fifty Lebanon Avenue. Uh, appellant name is Agor Andrus Adruska. Um, that is in uh, a continuous request by the appellant to which um, the city has no objection. Okay, we reviewed this matter in executive session, and we will continue this matter, but with the caveat that it must be heard in the next listing. Understood. Thank you. All right. Is anyone else? And I'm going to turn it over to uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Jeffrey Cohen. Okay. Good afternoon, members of the board. Uh, this, Good is afternoon, Mr. Cohen. To, this is in reference to number three on the list, uh, uh, Raza Property Group slash Rahil Raza, HA 2022-001341. Uh, and actually, Appellants Council, Joseph Consul is here as well. We've reached an agreement, uh, and I'll let Mr. Consul take it from here. Okay, but before you do that, does that include the other matter, number two, as well? No, it actually only pertains to the one matter, number three. Uh, number okay. two is actually not my case. Okay, okay. And the attorney's name, sir, if you'd speak up. Jo attorney Joseph Consul. Uh, just one moment. Uh, we just need you to spell your last name. C-O-N-S-O-L-E. Okay, and you are representing... Uh, uh, Rahil Raza. That's correct. Okay. And what is the agreement? We have an agreement to settle the outstanding fines for a uh, lump sum payment of $1,000. Such payment was already made by my client today. Okay. Oh, that's excellent. Uh, and the uh, agreement was that in exchange for the reduction that uh, the appellant would withdraw the appeal, uh, I just yes, like correct. To pass to Mr. Consul and have him confirm. Yes, confirmed the appeal uh, on that matter is is withdrawn. Um, you guys are mentioning number two on the list. Can oh, we... no, no, but don't, but don't go there yet. Uh, uh, we, okay. we just, I mean, we're still on number three. Yeah, I understand. Uh, but you, you've done an agreement, which we need to, you've asked us to confirm, correct? 
Yes, sir. Well, the Mr. Cohen, I'm asking. The agreement you. is between the parties. Uh, the yes. withdrawal is the part that would uh, be put on Blur's record today. Oh, so we just listed as withdrawn then. Exactly. And I apologize for any confusion. It's not a city affirmed agreement. It's just a withdrawal to make things go quicker. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll note that that matter has been withdrawn by the appellate. Okay. Uh, and uh, I eventually will pass to my colleague, uh, Len Reuter, to handle number 22. Uh, but I believe uh, Mr. Consul wanted to address number two on the list first. Okay. But before we go there, who's on the city representing number two? That would be me. Uh, Jim okay. Kelly, on behalf of the Okay, Ms. Kelly. Okay. All right, Mr. Kelly, because uh, I'd like to hear from the city first. Do you have an, an idea of what's being, what's coming with this number two? I, I do not, Chairman Woodson. Uh, the city's prepared to go forward today. Um, okay, so um, Mr. Council, you need to wait until the case is called or else you need to get on the phone with Mr. Kelly and work out something. I would like to get on the phone with Mr. Kelly because it was not, I, don't, I didn't see this one on the list despite having a hearing notice. Okay, well then you guys need to talk. Okay. Uh, We'll move on to other matters while you talk. talk. Okay, is anyone else? Yes, good afternoon again, board. Dejane Davis on behalf of the city. I wanna draw the board's attention to uh, what is listed as number 17 on today's list. Okay. Appeal number HA 2022-002425-6414 Rising Sun Avenue. Um, KGKS Incorporated doing business as um, Keta's Lounge. Uh, this is a continuous request by the city to which um, appellant's counsel is present. Uh, Mr. Mr. Crick, Justin Crick, if, if you can hop on. Um, it is my understanding that opposing counsel does not have any, any objection to uh, this continuous request. Okay, Mr. Kirk, are you present? Yes, he's muted. You're muted. You're muted, Mr. Crick. Thank you. Yes, there is no objection to that continuance. Uh, yes, just formally put your name on the record for us, please. Justin Crick, K-R-I-K, -K, on behalf of the appellant. Okay, K-R-I, your name is misspelled on this list, and my apologies. It's K-R-I-K, -K. all right. Yes, it is. All right, thank you very much. We will thank continue you. continue that matter then. Thank you. Thank you, and at this time, I'm now going to, uh, 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 my colleague, Mr. Reuter, is going to now address the okay. board. Okay. Okay, Ms. Reuter. Hi, thank you, uh, members of the board. Leonard Reuter, R-E-U-T-E-R. -E -E uh, I believe we have a joint request uh, for a continuance in number 22. That's HA 2022-002236-6123 West Passionk Avenue. Uh, the appellant is uh, Jacqueline Dispensa, and she is represented by counsel Vincent Melchiori. Okay. Good afternoon. Vincent Melchiori on behalf of uh, Ms. Dispensa. All right, thank you. Uh, this, so this is a joint uh, request for continuous, uh, Mr. Reuter? Well, Correct. I had I had tried to get Mr. Reuter to contact me before we went on. Uh, there's some other things that we need to discuss. There's been some ongoing issues, um, and we haven't had that opportunity to discuss those yet. So I would ask uh, Well, Mr. Mr. Melchior, are you, are, you, are you opposed to the joint uh, continuous request? At, at this point, until I have some conversation with Mr. Reuter, yes. Okay, well, let's do this then. Let's... Um, Let's hold this matter, um, go through other things. Mr. Rotary and Mr. Melchior, you can come back before the hearing's closed today and tell us where we are. Okay, thank you. Sure. Mr. Rotary, okay. I'll Len, I'll give you a call. Okay, but I'm gonna be here at the hearing for a while. So are are you, I, I think there's a little confusion. Mr. Melchior, are you okay with continuing today's hearing? Well, no, remember I said I had to contact my client. And oh, been, I see, I see. Okay. some ongoing issues with this inspector that have not stopped despite me emailing Well, him let's, we, yeah, I'd rather, can't go it into the record. All right, um, after we do a couple of things, I'll try to reach out to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay. Yeah, so there, there I th I'm not, I know you're running to go in number order. I'm not yes. sure I, I know everybody that's next. I have, uh, looks like I do have the next couple. Yeah, the next few actually. So uh, with respect to number 29 on the list. Okay. Uh, HA 2021-005427-1309 South 49th Street. Uh, I believe the appellant uh, has requested a continuance. Uh, the appellant um, 
is ostensibly the owner of the property, but there's a tangled title issue. She uh, is asking for six month continuance. Uh, I don't think we want that long, but we'll leave it to the board's discretion how long they're willing to give, but we don't have an objection to a continuance today. Okay, the board reviewed this matter in executive session and concluded, given the fact that as a this is the second time a continuance has been requested, uh, but also uh, there is a tango title involved uh, that could be super complex to resolve. I'm wondering if Miss Morgan is currently on the screen. Is she currently here, Miss Morgan, or anyone representing Miss Morgan? I don't believe she is. No. Uh, Ms. If, if, if I may, board, um, I believe uh, Miss Morgan sent an email to the board stating that she would not be able to attend due to a family emergency um, okay. with the request. Okay, uh, Mr. Rutter, do you know if she has counsel working with her? She... I don't believe she does, no. Okay. I mean, she may on the, on the title issue, but not for the board case. Okay, so what we're going to do, we have agreed to allow this to be continued for six months, but with the caveat that it must be heard uh, when it comes up. Okay, thank you very okay. much. Thank you very much. Okay, you, you uh, had... I'm... I believe I have a couple more before uh, other people. Uh, what was that? 29. Okay. So 30 uh, HA 2022-0001231111 Spring Garden Street. The appellant is Evan Lynette. Uh, and I believe Mr. Uh, David Orfanides, who represents the appellant, is here uh, requesting a continuance. The city does not object. Okay. Mr. Orfanides, someone here, or someone representing that firm present? I saw him. Okay. Uh, again, uh, the board uh, reviewed this in the executive session and uh, agreed to continue this matter uh, mm -hmm. based on a re resolution of the underlying zoning issue. Yeah, it should, it's a it's a matter of right. It's just getting uh, we keep okay. getting more eyes on the plan. So as soon as we have that, okay. it, uh, Mr. Orfanides, I have to remind you. Please put your name on the record, please. Sure, it's uh, David Orfanides. O R P H A N I D E S. Okay, thank you. So we'll continue the matter. Then. Thank uh, you. I'm sorry. Was there a time frame for that? Was there a certain? Uh, we we did not place a time frame on it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Orfanides, do you have a time? Uh, I mean, at this time? point, I, I would hope. I mean, we're still working on revisions to the drawings to respond to the last RFI. I mean, I would say 60 or 90 um, would probably be fine. I mean, 90 would be safer, but um, it's just to document existing conditions. So um, okay. I don't think it, there's any anything life threatening here. So, of course, if we get the permit, we'll notify Mr. Reuter and the law department, and we can hopefully resolve this matter. And okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll go for ninety days. Okay. Okay. That, that's fine. No objection. Uh, and that's it for me. I had one other, but Mr. Kelly already put that on the record and moot complaint. Okay. So thank you very much. Already. Uh, anyone else? Uh, yes, members of the board. If I could call your attention to number thirty-six. Uh, this is Kevin Kelly, but really it's the uh, Frederick A. Simeon Foundation. Uh, appellant uh, counsel Bill Dion is here, and I believe uh, if you could ask him to unmute, I believe he's having trouble or, or could not unmute himself, but he is a participant on this call. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, yes, oh, William Dion. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, board. Um, William uh, Dion here on behalf of. Uh, Kevin Kelly, but it is um, the owner of the entity is the Frank Simeon Foundation. Okay. And this is a joint continuance request for 90 days at least. Uh, the reasoning being this may this matter may be mooted out and withdrawn uh, given 90 days. The uh, is my understanding the appellant is attempting to obtain a permit separate from the permit that is at issue and was revoked in this action. Uh, okay. And All right, that's so the ideal. I can just okay. confirm what Mr. Cohen's saying that yes, we are in the process of um, having the plans um, updated with the architect and intend to submit a new building permit in the near future. And upon issuance of that permit, we'll withdraw this appeal. So we're hoping okay. to accomplish that in the next 90 days. Okay, so we'll continue this matter. Uh, just been one administrative matter. This Kevin Kelly, is that someone who completed the application for you, Mr. Dion? It is, and he is an employee of the Frank Simeon Foundation, who is the owner of the property. So um, he okay. filled it out and signed his name, but he's in okay. his capacity as an employee. Okay, uh, but just you are now the record, on the record. Yeah. Uh, just for the record, at the previous hearing in this matter, uh, Mr. Kelly was actually, we worked out that Mr. Kelly was not the real appellant, that it was a foundation, and that the foundation needed counsel. 
Uh, and that is why Mr. Dion is here. Yes. Okay. So now that Ms. Dion is, is uh, uh, noted for the record as counsel, will that will be noted going forward. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. I'm just going, is, do you have uh, additional matters or is that it? Uh, I have matters to put before the board. Okay. So well, let, let me go back then. There's a, there are a few Mr. things Chairman, that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, was case number 36 read into the record? I don't believe it was. Uh, with case number. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was not. Uh, oh, Mr. Cohen, would you do that, please? Of course. Uh, case number 36, HA 2022 000940. Uh, and the property address is 6825 to 6831 Norwich Drive. And the name? Oh, uh, Kevin Kelly or the uh, Frederick A. Simeon uh, MD Foundation Incorporated. Okay, I thank believe. you. Thank you. Okay, let's go back uh, the board. And is someone else has something? Yeah, my apologies, board. Caroline Curley, C-U-R-L-E-Y. On behalf of the city, I have matters number 40 and 41. And I did just want to bring to the board's attention that the city is objecting to number 41 as untimely. Okay. And Additionally, the city's witness on this, um, the city will uh, be unavailable after I think 5 p.m. is our hard stop. So I did just want to alert the board to that um, timing issue. Okay. Uh, so these matters. They're related. Uh, uh, they're, they're related, but not the same. Okay. Uh, I would ask them if the board is going to hear both of them, I would ask that they be heard, you know, um, consolidated. But as to the uh, matter that's listed as number 40 HA 2023-014-936 that uh appeal the city oh I'm I'm sorry HA uh nine the one ending in 938 the city is objecting to is untimely okay and uh is there who's representing the interests of uh this matter uh 1521-27 North 33rd Street Demetrius Baxter just yes, sir. Quick. Don't both yes. of them have the, the last three numbers the same? No. No, one is three six, the other one's three eight. Okay. Uh it was say three, I'm sorry. Yep. Uh Mr. Demetrius uh Baxter. Yes. Uh, uh, and actually, this is this matter came up in executive session. Sir, can you give us your image so we can see who we're speaking with? Yes, can you see me? Yes, as long as you aren't driving. You, you uh, not no, driving. no, I'm not driving. No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, Mr. Baxter, who's the owner? Uh, one, raise your right hand, please. So you may be sworn. Who, do you swear or affirm the testimony you give today be the truth to help you guide? Yes, I do. Okay, and I'm making an inquiry regarding uh, two separate matters. One is HA-2023-000936, 1521-27 North 33rd Street. The other matter is HA-2023-000938, 1521-27 North 33rd Street. Uh, in both those matters, sir, who are the, are the owners of the property? It would be uh, Lanco Group, LLC. Okay. That's the gentleman that I uh, I pay rent to. Okay, and the, and you are the a tenant in these uh, two am. properties. Yes, okay. I am currently a tenant. Yes, I am. Okay, and you, you are your uh, tenancy is that with you as an individual or with a, a LLC or a corporation? No, I'm just a tenant. It, that's what I'm asking. Is it your name as an individual? Is it a, is it an agreement between the owner of the building and your company? Yes, it is. It's an agreement between the owner of the building and my company. What is the company's name? Top Speed Automotive and Transport LLC. Okay, so that I think we, you may have been here before. You need an attorney to represent you in these hearings. Yeah, yeah. I am actually currently seeking a uh, representation now. Uh, I have filed an appeal about two weeks ago. And I'm currently reaching, I'm waiting for a lawyer to hit me back now to represent me. The, the owner of the property stated that he had an attorney involved with the zoning, but uh, his attorney hasn't reached back out to me yet. Yeah, but his attorney can't represent your interest. At least I wouldn't recommend it. No. But the point is this, uh, we can't hear this case today because uh, you need an attorney. 
I, need uh, just, I just want to lodge the city's objection board. Um, this is an occupant of the building. Yes. And these appeals are, um, at least to the first appeal, um, listed as number, or I'm sorry, the second appeal is number 40. That matter is untimely. He failed to appear with an attorney. It's very clear from the board's instructions that L if LLCs wish to be represented, they need to bring um, an attorney to the board proceeding. Additionally, he listed this matter as an emergency appeal. So the city um, went out of its way to make sure our witness was available and, re and made, um, you know, did compile this in short haste. There's okay. no merit to these appeals. And so we would ask, um, especially since this involves a cease and um, a repeated violation of that cease, we would, if the board is going to allow this to continue and is not going to dismiss this for lack of failure to prosecute, then we would ask for a date certain um, at the next available listing. Uh, Miss Curl, you got ahead of me. Thank you. Yes. You, Sorry, you, just wanted to lodge. Yes. Just didn't, yeah, wanted to get you, it all out. You got ahead of me. You got ahead okay. of me. My apologies. Um, I got okay. excited. Yeah, I, I noticed uh, two things. Uh, Ms. Curley said most of what I was going to say, uh, Mr. Baxter. Uh, this is a cease operations, which you violated according to the record. Uh, and the, the second matter, which is the ending in 938, uh, why is it taking you so long to file your appeal? This wasn't timely. No, for one, I was not notified about a appeal until L and I came to put a cease operation on the building. I knew nothing about the first order of, of cease operation. Once again, I'm a, I'm a tenant at the building, but there are four other tenants that occupy this building as well. Right. But the point is that when you got your notice, you didn't file your appeal. And the notice itself, I, let, let me finish. Got, let me okay. finish. Let me finish. And the notice itself has very clearly written on it that you have to have an attorney if you're an LLC. I didn't get, I didn't get a notice. I had got a cease operation. I happened to be outside of the building, the warehouse, the day that Ellen I pulled up to put the cease operation on the door, which I knew nothing about. And I clearly asked her what, what was going on. And she objected to tell me what was going on and what I needed to do. I went down to the city building the next day to put in a pill to stop the cease operation because that was the first time that I initially heard about the cease operation, which was ultimately three weeks ago. Okay, I and knew the, nothing about the cease operation prior to that because I had no knowledge of it. I'm just a the, tenant. The 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 owner of the building never said anything to you about it. No, he did not. He did not. None of the other all. none of the other tenants said anything about it. I knew about two tenants moving out. That's all I knew about. I knew about two tenants that occupied the the front of the building moving out, but nothing was said to me at all about a cease operation, about any fines. I didn't receive the fines until I went down to the municipal building the next day to file an appeal. And the young lady said that she recommended for me to file an emergency. This yes, is my and first time ever dealing with Ellen I. I never uh, well, dealt with Ellen I before. This is my first time ever dealing with Ellen so Okay. I. Okay. In this I instance, just, let me finish. Uh, in this ahead. instance, uh, <clears throat> Well, let's do this. You know what I'm going to do? Uh, because, Ms. Curley, you raised some interesting points. I'm going to take the board and executive session for a moment, and uh, we will come back to you. So everyone be patient. Okay. We're going to go in executive sessions for about five minutes. Thank you. Okay. Cousin. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I believe that uh, the court reporter, uh, if you're prepared, just give me your thumbs up. We'll go back on the record. Yes, sir. I'm ready for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, after uh, executive session, we're now back on the record regarding two matters, uh, HA-2023-00936 and HA-2023-00938, both concerning 1521-27 North 33rd Street. Uh, Mr. Demetrius Baxter and I believe Ms. Curley representing the city of Philadelphia. Uh, after having uh, heard the, the arguments, uh, we do have one question from Mr. Baxter before I share with him where we're headed with this. Uh, Ms. Curley, you're yes. muted, so if you unmute yourself. Uh, Mr. Baxter, uh, you're yes. lease with the, you have a written lease with the owner of the property? Yes, I do. And in that written lease, who's responsible for issues like zoning and use registration permits? If I'm not mistaken, uh, it, it says nothing about the, that in the lease. 
It's okay. just a regular, yeah, it's just a month to month lease. Yeah, it's nothing. Okay. So the owner has not presented himself and to appeal this matter. So there are two things here, Mr. Uh, Demetrius, Mr. Baxter. Uh, the first matter yes. of ending in 936, uh, we're going to dismiss that for standing. Uh, based on the information we have, you don't have standing to, to bring this appeal. Uh, okay. The dues registration has to be a it's a zoning matter, and either you okay. or the owner have to do it, and the owner either has to pass that to you in writing in the lease or maintain that right to himself, and okay. he hasn't done that, and so there's nothing you okay. can do about that. Uh, so, okay. so he has to do that, but you need a lawyer to to help you untangle this. Uh, okay. The second matter is in one of timeliness. Uh, you missed the uh, the appeal date. Uh, so again, uh, that's the matter ending in 938. Uh, it's just missed for timeliness. Okay, Ms. Curley, you have any further comment? Yeah, I did just want to clarify. So um, number 40, which the board, which is uh, ending in 936, that the um, appellant appealed a site violation notice, which was a violation of the cease that was issued. I did just want to clarify that um, the so appeal he didn't appeal the cease. He appealed the violation of the cease. Correct. He never appealed the cease number. Oh. And the one we dismissed as untimely. That is a violation of the underlying notice of the underlying zoning violation, and that is untimely. And I believe it's correct for the board okay. to dismiss on that matter. Okay, but I will I make. Just want to make sure will... the board understood that number forty is a appeal of a of a violation of the cease. Okay, so let me correct uh, myself regarding H A dash twenty twenty three dash zero 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 nine three six. We will uh, dismiss this for failure to prosecute because he is not represented by counsel. Uh, because this is an appeal of the uh, violation to cease. Okay, uh, it means he continued to operate. In even though there was a cease posted on the building, he continued to operate, so he appealed that violation notice. He didn't, he's not represented by legal counsel, therefore, it's a failure to prosecute. Okay, Miss Curley, is that okay with you? That is correct. Um, and this, that is correct. Okay, uh, Mr. Baxter, I advise you yes. as quickly as you can get a lawyer to help you work this through. Okay, I sure, we will. can't do this on I your absolutely own. Will. I absolutely okay. will. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. We will then move on to the, there's a couple other matters. Again, thank you everyone for your patience in this. Uh, okay, um, number 10, uh, HA-2022-0020802-260 uh, Durard Road. Uh, Terry J. Matthews, it's a property maintenance matter. Who's representing the city in this? Good afternoon, Amy Skiles on behalf of the city of Philadelphia. Okay, Ms. Skiles, uh, is anyone representing the Matthews, Terry J. Matthews or James G. Matthews? We have a standing question before we proceed in this. Not, uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, there's no one present representing? Can I take something? Yeah. Okay, uh, anyone here representing 260 D-U-R-A-R-D Road? Gerard Road. Anyone representing Gerard Road? Okay, what time is it here? 2.35. Okay, uh, let's do this. Uh, Mr. Wade, uh, would you read that matter into the record, please? This is case number 10, hearing appeal number HA 2022 080 260 Gerard Road, Terry J. Matthews. Okay. Uh, was there service made? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Giles, what's your preference? As um, no one has appeared on this matter, we would ask for a city affirm for a non appearance today. Okay. Thank you. Before I call the vote, is anyone of uh, my colleagues or the board? Uh, if there's no objection, uh, I will now poll the board. Uh, the time you have, Mr. Pincus? 2.36 p.m. 2.36 p.m. Okay, with regard to HA-2022-0020860260, Gerard Road, 
Terry J. Matthews, City Affirm Non Appearance. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, number four, uh, we have an issue here uh, again. Uh, that's a uh, HA-2022-002283, 5400 Grays Avenue. Uh, certificate of Oxford Matter. Uh, there's legal counsel, Mr. Aaron Gross, but who's representing the city? Good afternoon, Amy Skiles on behalf of the city for this matter. And I actually, um, I spoke with Mr. Ben Samuel as on the call. Um, I believe he's representing the, the property owner um, okay. on this matter. I know... Um, I believe there was in the appeal paperwork, uh, Jennifer Quinn was was listed as the appellant, but she was a, a contact at at the the court, the owner corporation. Um, we didn't have an objection based on standing. Um, okay. And we I was able to reach uh, an agreement during the break with Mr. Ben Samuel for this case. Oh, OK. So that uh, timeout helped. Then. OK, Mr. Samuel, would you put your name on record, please? <laughs> Yes. Uh, good afternoon, board. Uh, this is attorney Samuel Ben Samuel, uh, representing the owners for 5400 Grays Avenue. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Giles, what is the agreement? Yes, we have agreed to a city of firm today with a 60-day stay of enforcement. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we will pull the board regarding HA-2022-002283, 5400 Grays Avenue. Uh, I believe that's the 5400 Grays Avenue LLC. Uh, the city affirm per the agreement, 60 day stay of enforcement, Ms. Skiles? Yes. Okay, thank you. The city uh, affirm per agreement, 60 day stay of enforcement. City affirm per the agreement, the 60 day stay of enforcement. City affirm with the 60 day stay of enforcement agreement. City affirm with a 60 day stay of enforcement with the agreement. Thank you. All righty. That takes care of that matter, Ms. Giles? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's go down to number 20, which is HA 2022-000151-4801 Glenmore Avenue, Juanita T. Jefferson. Uh, Who's representing the city in this matter? Good afternoon, members of the board. Jim Kelly on behalf of the city. Uh, Mr. Kelly, I understand there's a request for continuous based on the appellant's desire to be in person. I, I did not receive anything to that effect. I was unaware of that. Okay. Uh, the board has received that request, so we're prepared to uh, continue this. Uh, but the board will also reach out to the appellant to see if there's another way to accommodate their needs rather than uh, continuing this ad infinitum until we potentially will be back in in-person hearings. So we're gonna try to shorten that uh, continuous time frame. okay? Oh, okay. All right, so please note it as continued and the board will, administration will reach out to the appellant to set a near date. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, uh, number 28. Uh, HA-2022-001920-175 West Wingo Hawkins Street. Uh, who's representing the city? Good afternoon, Jeffrey Cohen for the city of Philadelphia. Mr. Cohen, uh, and I, is there a, an attorney representing the appellant? Uh, not that I'm aware, but as the board probably brought this up for standing issues, yes. there's also a timeliness issue. Okay. Um, is anyone uh, is, on on the screen oh, representing that property at interest on Wex Wingo Hawkins Street? Anyone present? Raise your hand. Uh, make a note in the chat. Whatever you need to do, so that you can get our attention. Okay. Is anyone present? Uh, West One Seventy Five or One Hundred West Wingo Hawkins mm -hmm. Street. I you to Mr. Wade, anyone in the waiting room that you I been able to identify related to this? No, I, I don't don't see anyone under that name. Okay. All righty. Uh, 
Mr. Uh, hearing, Cohen? Sorry, hearing no response. Uh, if the appellant has failed to appear, the city respectfully requests a city affirmed for failure to appear. Thank you. Mr. Wade, uh, was the service made? Give me one second. Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Did we have an issue as to whether the violation notice was issued to the correct party? Well, that's partly why uh, Mr. Wade is going to give me the issue of, of uh, service in terms of who, to whom it was issued. Uh, Mr. Cohen, the other matter uh, is in terms of who's the appropriate, uh, uh, who, who Who's the appropriate responsible party in terms of the uh, record? So there, uh, in this case, there are potentially two parties responsible. Uh, there's the owner of the property or the tenant. Uh, the owner of the property, I believe, has actually changed hands. It used to be uh, Glendale Melendez, and now it is uh, Sol, sorry, Sol Estevez Fana. Uh, the tenant is actually Manuel, Manuel Melendez, doing business as TNP Auto Service and Tire Shop. Uh, neither of those parties or none of those parties are the appellant. The appellant is Libio Matos. And what uh, is, is that person's, is that a standing matter? I, absolutely, that is a standing matter. I was hoping that Mr. Matos would appear today and explain why he has standing or at least okay. offer some explanation. Uh, I don't believe he does have standing. Okay. I, at Spindus? least I don't believe he is representing any of the owners and he is not an attorney. So he can't represent the owners before this board. Okay, Mr. Pink, is that that result uh, answer your question? Yes. yes. Okay, Mr. Wade, the uh... Mr. Ma Mr. Mr. Matos was the appellant. His address on his appeal was forty three thirty three Frankfurt, and notice to appear was sent to forty three thirty three Frankfurt. Thank you very much. The time you had, Mr. Pinkus? Two forty three p.m. Two forty three p.m. Okay. Uh, just one moment, please. Uh, with regard then to uh, HA 2022 175 West Wingo Hawkins Street, Libio Matos, City Affirm Non Appearance. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, members of the board. Okay. Uh, just want to move down then uh, to number 37. Uh, that's HA-2022-0009114813. Uh, Alcott Street. Uh, Walter Olatowski. Who's representing the city? Uh, also me, Jeffrey Cohen, members of the board. Okay, Mr. Olatowski, are you present? Speaking, speaking here. Can you hear okay. me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, uh, Mr. Yulotowski, would you raise your right hand so you can be, do you swear from the testimony you would give today be the truth to help you God? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you, sir. I noticed you're in a vehicle. Are you driving? No, 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 just. Uh... Okay. Uh, based on what we understand to be the nature of the appeal, uh, the uh, you're appealing for uh, uh, equity relief, meaning that you're seeking uh, costs of uh, furniture that was destroyed by the city of Philadelphia. Is that correct? Correct, and a guidance also. Okay, uh, you've appealed to the wrong board. We, we don't have authority over that matter. Well, uh, Mr. Pinkus, if I may. Uh, okay, just one moment. Uh, Mr. Pinkus will assume the role from this point. He'll speak for the board going forward. Mr. Cohen? Uh, Thank you. So you are correct that there's no equitable relief that this board can issue. However, the issue in this case is whether the violations were properly issued. Uh, and that actually determines what the city's action in response to those violations, whether that action was a proper exercise of the police power or not. Uh, the city's position, obviously, is it was a proper exercise of the police power, and therefore, uh, Mr. Ulatowski is responsible for paying the abatement cost uh, that the city incurred in abating these violations. So there is, there is a matter on which the board can rule, either affirmed or appeal sustained, etc., uh, and that, even though it doesn't directly implicate equitable relief, that does have some bearing on potential later proceedings. And and I also need guidance since I am a landlord and uh, 
to remove uh, personal property, I need a writ of possession from the courts and the, according to state law, because this is a, uh, it's a PHA property. Yeah. Mr. Ulitowski, that issue of removal of the property and the appropriateness of that would be an action you would have to bring and file in, in common pleas court against the city. Okay. The issue here is whether the violation notice was properly issued and if there in fact are costs associated with that violation notice, the issue of whether or not you should pay those costs would be something you would appeal, unfortunately, to the city tax review board. That hears issues of fines and payments and costs. Well, the issue cost. I would like the to only, board. The only, can I finish? Yes. The only issue that and Mr. Cohen is perhaps correct on is whether or not the violation notices, when issued, if I understand it correctly, were in fact properly issued. And if your appeal was timely upon the issuance of those violation notices, and I'd have to go back and take a look <clears throat> at your appeal. But if that's the argument, were the violations proper and is your appeal timely, then I believe based on what Mr. Cohen has represented, that, that is a matter that this board, the chairman uh, can conduct a hearing over. Okay, uh, just so, to add for the record, yes. uh, there is no, untimeliness claimed in this case. The city isn't saying that the appeal was untimely. Okay. Uh, the timing of this is different than most cases because this is a CLIP action, Community Life Improvement Program. CLIP usually provides 10 days in which to abate or for the owner of the property to fix the conditions that need abatement, after which CLIP will send a crew to go out and clean up or uh, take away trash or do whatever abatement action is necessary. Okay. Now, However, the appeal was filed within the 30 day period, so it is not untimely. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna move forward then. Mr. Yotoski, you prepared to uh, present your, your side of the story and when we move, call your case? Yes, is the inspector present? Uh, we'll do get all that done when we call the case. Uh, I'm doing the preliminary, uh, just doing some preliminary matters now. Mr. Cohen, you prepared to go forward when we call it? Uh, yes, we are. Thank you. Okay. One further question. Is this property owned by you individually or by a corporation or an LLC? And individually, I'm representing myself. I own it, I own it completely by myself. Thank you. Right, thank thank you. you. Okay. So I think that resolves most of those matters. We do have one final matter, which is number two, which is HA-2022-001346. 1316 North 18th Street. Who's representing the city? Good afternoon, members of the board. Jim Kelly on behalf of the city. Okay, Mr. Kelly and your counterpart on this. Good afternoon, Joseph Consul, Raza Properties. Yes, okay. The issue there was the need for an attorney. You've now noted your appearance for the record. So uh, both of you prepared to go forward when we call on this matter? Actually, Chairman Woodson, um, in the interim, we've I've been able to reach an agreement. Um, it's, it's a verbal agreement at this point, but once it's signed, um, hopefully by the end of the day today, I'll have it over to the board. Okay, but since both of you are on the record today, why don't you give us that and we will vote to confirm it. Sure, so the agreement is for a uh, city of firm with a 30-day stay of enforcement. Okay. okay. Mr. Council, is uh, you, I didn't hear you. I said, I said agreed, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So then uh, we will pull the board regarding HA-2022-001346-1316 North 18th Street. Rahil Raza doing business as Raza CR Properties LLC, city of firm per the agreement between the parties. 30-day stay of enforcement, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with a 30-day stay of enforcement. Same, same determination, city of firm with a 30-day stay of enforcement. City affirm per the agreement with a 30 day stay of enforcement. City affirm per the agreement with a 30 day stay of enforcement. City affirm per the agreement, 30 day stay of enforcement. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let's do this. Uh, I think we've uh, dealt with all of the preliminary matters. Uh, Mr. Wade, I want to uh, go down to number 35 and call that one. So if you read that into the record. 
Case number 35, hearing appeal number HA 2022 000 964 2547 South Broad Street, Victoria Scarpato. David Collette is, is listed here as uh, an attorney. He is not, I believe he was just here for previous hearings as a power of attorney. I'm only power of attorney, not an attorney. Not an attorney. Oh, okay. And I'm not an attorney. Understood. Understood. We'll get I to that. Power of attorney. Power of attorney that I sent to um, I sent to Miss Davis. Okay, Miss Collette. Uh, no, no. Just, just, just for a moment. Hold on a second, okay? I'm we'll sorry. call you. We'll call you in a minute. Who's representing the city? Good afternoon, Chairman Woodson. Mary Costello, on behalf of the city of Philadelphia. Good afternoon. Okay, Miss Costello. Before we get started, uh, just want to clear, clarify this one point regarding the power attorney. Have you had a chance to review it? I have, and we do have a copy of it. I can forward it to the board if you have not received Well, I just want to know on the record if you're comfortable with proceeding uh, with that power of attorney. Yes. Okay, so that doesn't present any standing issues for you? It does not. Okay, all right, thank you. We will then uh, proceed with the case. Well, okay, Mr. Could, could I ask the, could I ask uh, no, the no, board something? I'm not, sorry, not yet, Mr. Yeah, the way we do this is the city uh, puts this case on. They call the witness. They will interrogate the witness. You can cross-examine the witness if you choose. Once the city is completed, then you put your case on. Right. But now, I, you have I, something that you want, want to say that will end things, you think? Yeah. Yes, I, I would like to say something. I, I've been dealing with everybody in reference to this. And Peter DeLisi from Plan Examiner uh, turned down the fire alarm for some little wiring problem that was in there. And that was fixed and it's resubmitted. Now, we, we, we've been going through this now for nine months back and forth. And this uh, Mr. Coletta, Mr. Coletta, hold on a second. Mr. Coletta, Mr. Coletta, that's testimony. So what you have I know, to do, well, 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 you can't do that out of order. I've asked you not to do that out of order. So you, you've been muted, Mr. Coletta, and we will proceed with the hearing. And I'm asking you because the court reporter can only record one person's voice at a time. And so you have to follow the rules. Understood? Uh, Ms. Costello, please proceed. Chairman Woodson, I do have one witness today. It's okay. Supervisor Mark Green. Okay, Mr. Green present? I believe he is present. Yes, I am. Okay, Mr. Green, if you raise your right hand so you may be sworn. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you give today be true so help you God? Yes. Okay, you can place your hand down. Ms. Costello? Uh, Supervisor Green, can you please state your name for the record? Mark Green, and Supervisor what is, South District. I was just gonna ask you what your position is with L&I. Mm -hmm. and, and how long have you held this position with L&I as an inspector or as a supervisor? I've been, well, I just been, came a supervisor a month ago. I've been an inspector for five and a half years. And have you had an opportunity to review the case file for this matter? Yes, I looked it over last night and today, this morning. Thank you. Permission to share my screen, Chairman? Yes. Lewis? Supervisor Green, I would like to point your attention to what's been marked as City Exhibit A. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Can you please identify this for the record? That's a notice of order to correct, a notice of violation. And what's the, what's the date of this notice? 2-3-2022. And what day were the repairs to be completed per this notice? 3-9-2022. And can you just read for the record what by what the outstanding violations are per this notice? Per the notice, uh, provide a certification for the fire alarm system. Obtain a permit for that fire alarm system to be maintained correctly. It was violations with the call stations, the manual pull stations. They were old and needed to be updated. The inspector at time was also asking for electrical permit for the, for the work that needed to be done. 
Uh, he also saw that it was no zoning for the commercial mixed use property. Self-closing devices, arms on all required uh, exit doors. They were gone from the pictures I seen. And he's asking for emergency light certification and some damage to the interior stairs between the first and second floor. Uh, fire extinguishers have to be mounted and tagged on every level. And the property needs a rental license. And in regards to the zoning, because they need updated zoning, do they need an updated certificate of occupancy as well? Yes, because they changed the use. Okay. I'd like to direct your attention to what's been marked as city exhibit B. Can you please identify this for the record? As the property uh, 2547 South Rock. And what are we looking at here? That's what the inspector saw on the first floor level. That is the therapist uh, therapy office, which is not zoned. Okay, and is this what you're referring to when you say mixed use? Yes. It's commercial at the bottom and residential. What's up? Okay. And what are we looking at in this photograph here? Looking at an exit sign and a damaged uh, emergency light is missing a light. One of them. And do these exit signs require any kind of certification? Well, the, the exit signs, they have to be lit all the time and they need an electrical certification as far as everything connected to those signs as far as the fire alarm system, um, strobe lights and stuff of that nature. So to answer your question, yes. And would that certification need to be uploaded to Eclipse or? Yes, yeah. Okay. And can you please identify for the record what we're looking at here? We're looking at a door, an exit door, I believe an exit door that's missing a hold open device. You can see on the wall and on the door where the hold open device was, basically the arm to the door to bring the door back to a closing um, function, the function properly, actually. And is that a safety device? Yes. So in case of a fire, uh, you're running through the door, that door will close behind you, stopping the fire or smoke from coming into that passage where you're entering. OK. And can you please identify for the record what we are looking at here? You're looking at a tag mounted fire extinguisher. And are you aware of what floor this fire extinguisher is located from your review of the case file? From my review of the case file, he was only able to gain access to the first floor and the second floor the first time. I believe that's on the second floor. And are fire extinguishers required to be located on just one floor or multiple floors in a building? Well, all common hallways. So, common the fire, yes. so the fire extinguisher would need to be located on both the first and second floor. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And can you please identify for the record what we are looking at here? You're looking at two entrances to the property with two mailboxes. Okay. And is there anything missing above the door here that we're looking at? Above the door? Well, that's the same door where the hold open device is broken, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And uh, Supervisor Green, what would the uh, appellants need to do to comply these violations? They would have to obtain zoning, a CEO, uh, get the certs uploaded to Eclipse and comply to fire violations. And have they done that thus far? No, the last note I had from the last inspector that was there at time of inspection could not enter basement and apartment unit area, fire extinguisher and physical therapy office mounted and tag, emergency light installation, no certification uploaded to Eclipse system as required, all other violations still open, no contact from owner, try to contact Mr. David, his number is up there, no answer, follow up inspection required. Walked first floor with Mr. Gerald and spoken to Jerry, owner of Superior Physical Therapy Incorporated. 
So to to date, these violations have not been corrected. No. Okay, thank you. No further questions. Okay, Mr. Coletta, do you have any cross examination of Mr. Green based on his well, testimony? Before we proceed, Mr. Yes. Green just testified. Um, I guess what the records show as of the last inspection. I did not hear a date. What was the date of that inspection you just read to us? The date was March 7th, 2023. My apologies. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. Coletta, please uh, unmute Mr. Coletta. Mr. Coletta, are you muted? Can you unmute yourself? Or Mr. Wade, can you unmute him? Mr. Chair, did we swear in Mr. Coletta? Uh, no, I think I'll need to do that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Coletta, you remuted yourself. There you go. Uh, Mr. Coletta, before we get started, I need to swear your answer if you raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you give today be the truth to help you guys? Absolutely, I do. Okay, do you have any cross-examination of uh, the inspection supervisor, Mr. Mark Green? Well, well, not not at this moment. But, okay, but well, if you don't have any... No, no, but, no, no, no. If you don't have any questions, I mean, Mr. Green, let me put on a case. That's right, because you have to follow the procedure. I'm asking you we do it in order. You can put your case on in a moment. But for right now, I ask if you have any cross examination. If you don't, that's fine. Uh, not, I'll ask, not right now. Not okay, right thank now. You. I may. I may okay. later. Well, okay. Uh, Ms. Uh, Costello, do you have any additional witnesses? I do not, Chairman Woodson. Okay. All right, Ms. Coletta, it's your turn to put your case on. Uh, everything in the building is is completed on that list, except for the fire alarm, and it's been rejected by plan by the plan department, which is Peter Delise. And now the last problem was just sent out today. They were at municipal service again today, and Peter Delise is supposed to meet him in person sometime between now and Monday to pay for the permit and then the fire alarm would be done. There's fire extinguishers everywhere in the building. There was closures on all the doors now, except that door there, somebody ripped it off. It's probably the disgruntled tenant that we're evicting. And Jerry knew that. Jerry's the guy that your inspector had spoke to. Right. But everything, everything was minor things that were done except for this fire alarm. And the city is nine months back and forth to get this approved. Okay, so Mr. Was, Coletta, so I have I, a question for you. I have a question for ahead. you. Uh, what about the zoning and the certificate of occupancy? Have you done that? The zoning is done, even though we bought the building 56 years ago, and it was three apartments and one store. And have you we updated the zoning? Have you? Have oh, you, yes. When did you update it? There's nothing in the city record, according to the inspector. Well, that was 1129 and they charged me 620. They charged me a $300 fine and $620 for the for the zoning update. Okay, before you proceed, 1129 what year? 2022. Okay, 112922, tell us exactly what that reference is. You need to give me some details. We went to the municipal services and I was told that there was the right amount of square footage at the building by Leonard Ruder. He's an attorney that I saw earlier. He was for um, when we- No, no, what I'm asking you, no, 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 sir, you're misunderstanding me. What I'm asking you, on 11-29, you paid $600. And were you given a, what kind of document were you given when you paid that $600? We were given a new zoning papers, but you can't hardly- well, What does it say? What does it say? You need to be it, very specific. It's zoned for three apartments now and the, and the therapy place that's underneath. Okay. That's with the $620 covered. Well, okay, I no. covered a $300 fine and, and the $300 and $320 for the zoning. Okay. And, and right. that's on the city records. That's on the city records. I don't understand why they can't pull it up. Okay. Well, and at the moment, the alarm system has the certification for the alarm system has not been submitted, correct? It's been submitted three times already, and now not approved. Change, it has not been approved. It will be approved this time. This is the last but, time. But as of right now, it has not been approved. At this moment. So in correct. the beginning of this hearing, what I was going to ask you is 
to try to cut this simply because it's taking so long back and forth is to give us 60 or 90 days and we'll come back and we'll withdraw this whole uh, thing. So, sir, y- okay. you have to follow the, the procedure as it's laid out. We can't do uh, ad hominem uh, procedures. So the second the, is the other matter is, did you get a rental, rental license? You can't get a rental license until you get so, the violations. All so you, the answer is, okay, we so have, the answer is no. But you, you got to understand what I'm saying. I understand you. how, how have, you don't need to tell me that. I understand that, how those work. So you don't have We a rental had license. rental license for years and they're revoked when you get a violation. We can't get them until we get the fire alarm. We have a guy contracted for the fire alarm. We can't do the fire alarm till we get the permit. When did you uh, contract with your fire alarm company? What is it? When did you contract with your fire alarm company? Nine months ago. And he hasn't been able to get this resolved? The violation notice was written over a year ago. No, it's uh, 10 months, 10 and a half months. And, And the fire alarm, the fire alarm plans have been put in three times already. And now this is the last correction. I have the plans right here. Okay. This is the this is the last correction the city tells us they're going to have to make. And that fellow's name is Peter Delisi. That, that okay? Thank you. Fire alarm electrical. Yeah, that's a, that's that's fine. But the issue is whether or not it's already done. And you've made an appeal. And the issue is the what's the basis of your appeal? The basis of my appeal was. You can't appeal a fire alarm. I mean, you put the appeal in, so I'm asking why. You can't the appeal a fire alarm. Of, okay, so if, I'm not sure. If what, you read what the city case. paperwork. But what is your case I, then? What is your case? I appealed everything that was on the list except the fire alarm. You can't appeal the fire alarm. So why did you appeal all the other things? What's your basis? What's your defense? Because most of the stuff was already there. They wrote stuff up that, that wasn't true. So you're saying that there are some violations that were noted that were that should not have been written. Which That's ones correct. were they? Which the violations were the ones for the railing, the ones for the fire extinguishers, the ones for the exit doors? The exit doors uh, is the issue. We saw photographs of no closers and, on one and no uh, sign on another one. And the signs will be put because that. But they weren't the there doing the. But they, but they weren't there. No, they weren't there when there. the inspection. Right. They're they weren't there. there Oh, so that's a violation. That's a legitimate violation. That's part of the fire alarm. No, no, no. But that's an illegitimate violation that you said was not is was done improperly. Any other violations that should not have been written in addition to those? Well, we'd have to go through the whole list. Well, I mean, you this is your appeal. And so if you you need to say specifically why the city is in error. If they are not in error, then we need to move on. Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, Ms. Costello, you have any questions? Yes, Mr. Um, Paletta? Paletta, uh, hey. Mr. Washington, good afternoon. Real quick question for you. Was an electrical permit ever uh, submitted since it's required to update the system? Did you ever do the electrical permit? The fire alarm guy has done all that. No. I, I Did don't you know ever do that. the electrical permit? Yeah. Did the fire alarm company submit an electrical permit to do the work? Did they get an electrical permit? They can't get the permit till Mr. Delise approves it. I don't think the they've Ms. Washington, submitted. I don't think they've done the work yet. I don't think until the plans examiner finishes their review, they can't do the work. That's correct. Okay. We can't. We it's like it's like the egg and the chicken. We can't do this without doing that. We can't. So we're at a block here. We need Mr. Delise should be. This is the last thing he, he swore to. It's it's the last thing, and okay. it should be done this week. And then the building will be in compliance. This will all be moot. All this. Okay, uh, Ms. Costello, you have any additional questions? I I do not have any additional questions for Mr. Coletta. Okay, already. Uh, anyone else have any further questions of Mr. Coletta? Just a comment, Mr. Mr. Chair, to Mr. Coletta. Okay, I got two questions coming in. Uh, Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Pink. Just a comment, Mr. Coletta. I hear you clearly, and and I partially understand, but your building was not properly covered by the proper 
fire alarm system when the inspector went out there. So that puts you in violation. To correct this, you have to get an electrician and get plans and have to be approved by the planning unit before they can begin to work. So it's not necessary, well, it is necessary for this to be done, but it doesn't mean that your building was not in violation at the time that the inspector went out there. It was according to the code. And so the inspector wrote the, the uh, apply, appliable codes at the time, which now bring you here today. I just okay, want you to make sure. I understand the fire okay. alarm because our fire alarm was old, very old. It yeah, worked, yeah. but it was very old. But what like the railings going up the steps. This is this was all because of well, a I was only speaking on the fire alarm, sir. I, I just, understand. Okay. Well, Mr. Mr. Pincus, Pincus, uh, I want to ask Mr. Pincus had a question. Mr. Pincus, you, you well, I, was just, I was just going to observe that it appears I went to the file and a zoning permit was issued on November 29th. And that permit was for um, personal services residential household living multifamily. So there appears to be, uh, at least on record, uh, four pages uh, of a zoning permit issue. There were two appeals uh, filed. Oh, I guess those are the appeals that are pending to, to this board. Um, uh, but there was a permit issued for the appears for the use. So the use. That's what I see. I don't know that is the city able to. I mean, this is what I see on the city's uh, files when I went to the city website. I see it also. Okay. It was just done. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, done in November. Yes. Uh, Ms. Costello, is there a need to, uh, to uh, I guess, adjust the, the violation notices here? What are we, what's, the, well, what's outstanding to be dealt well, with? There's a violation at the time it was written. Yes. So that so that's what we would say, Chairman Woodson. At the time that it was written, all of all of these matters were in violation. And if I believe Mr. Coletta seems to be arguing that they weren't, or that some of them are now and some of them aren't, but what he appealed was the original violation notice of, of which he's admitted on record that there are still outstanding violations. Okay. Uh, particularly, uh, the fire alarm system has not yet been upgraded. Well, once once we get the fire alarm permit, that covers emergency lighting and the fire alarm system. It's all tied into one system. Yes, understood. So that, understood. that and and there was always fire extinguishers in the building, inspect it, and there was always railings in the building. I don't know where that stuff came from that was on the list. Okay, uh, but as long as you, okay, you understood that there's some things still have to yet be done. Okay, anything else from anyone? I would just I would just say, Chairman Woodson, that Mr. Coletta is not contesting all the violations. He's admitted that some of the violations are still outstanding. He still does not have a certi certificate of occupancy for this building, so that we would ask for a city affirmed these violations. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Coletta, ha have you applied for a uh, uh, a CO based on a revised you zoning? Not, you could They will not do anything until the violations are gone. Until I okay. get the permit for the fire alarm and emergency lighting, they won't give me nothing. They won't give me the rental license back. We had all that. Okay. We have no pro we have no problem getting this stuff, but it it's it's nine and a half to ten months trying to get the permit to put the fire alarm or everything would be okay now in the building. Mr. Chair. We, we don't have we don't have like a junky building like we take okay. care of it. Understood. Uh, Mr. Pink, Mr. Tennant. Mr. Chair, as your question to Mr. Coletta, Ms. the owners can apply for the CO. It will not be approved until there's a permit, but the application with the date would go in and it would be awaiting the approval of the permit. So that would then cut down on the time. Uh, and that would mean that he, he made an attempt to get the right documents, but he is being rejected for other reasons. And once Mr. Parisi clears, and if he clears everything and the violations close out, then that CO would be processed. But in this case, they haven't applied yet. Uh, and that's going to put them well, behind time even further. Well, I, I, I like that. I'd like to say that that's 
we were at municipal services to do it. We were at municipal services to apply. They would not let us do it. They said, oh. you have these violations. I think okay. Mr. Green can shed some light on that, Mr. Green, please. Supervisor Green. Violations do not stop you from obtaining. Our whole thing, my job is compliance. We want you to comply. Why write the violation when you can't get what I'm asking for? If that Thank makes you. sense. Okay. All right. Well, is this the, is this person that just spoke? The gentleman that just spoke is he the actual fellow that was out at the? No, party? he's the supervisor. He's no, the I'm supervisor. not. Well, can I get his number to try to get him when I can't get the, the inspector? Can Let's I get do his this. phone number? Uh, Mr. Green, can you put that in the chat? Yes, I can. You you put in the chat, Mr. Coletta, you can get what it from the it? chat. What does that mean? What does that mean in the chat? Okay, well, let's do this. Uh, Mr. Green, uh, you have a public phone number that, that he can use? Yes. Okay, give him that number, please, if you would mind. 267. Okay. 441. Yeah. 2386. Okay, thank you very much. No problem, sir. I'm going to call this for a vote. HA-2022-000964. Uh, Twenty-five forty-seven South Broad Street, uh, City Firm. Mr. Chair, maybe uh, I don't know. Based on what I'm hearing, would it be at all possible to suggest that there be a, uh, a thirty or sixty-day stay while he tries to get? Um, okay, the, that's the, appropriate. Okay, he has to submit his other documentation. So we'll, we'll uh, I will amend my vote with a sixty-day stay of enforcement. Okay, Mr. thank you. That's fair. We well, haven't finished voting yet, Mr. Coletta. You don't know whether you got it or not. No, I'm telling you. So, Mr. Coletta, Mr. Coletta, Mr. Coletta, shut up. please, because you're getting in the way of your own case, okay? City affirmed 60 day stay of enforcement. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, that's the, the final vote of the board. Okay, that matter is resolved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to the next matter. Are Thank we going you. back to the top of the list? Yes. Thank you. That brings us to case number six, hearing appeal number HA 2022. 002274, 2010 South Fraser Street, Deborah Williams. Okay, who's representing the city? Good afternoon, Dejane Davis on behalf of the city of Philadelphia. Good afternoon, Ms. Davis. Uh, Deborah Williams, anyone representing Deborah Williams or uh, 2010 South Fraser Street? 2010 South Fraser Street, Deborah Williams. Ms. Davis, have you had any conversations with the appellant? No, I have not. Okay. Service was made. Service was made. Okay. Uh, Ms. Davis, what is your preference then? Yes, the city will be um, requesting a city affirmed due to failure to appear. Okay. Mr. Pincus, what time do we have? 3.19 p.m. 3.19 p.m. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, well, we'll call the board regarding HA-2022-00-2274, 2010 South Fraser Street, Deborah Williams, City Affirmed Non-Appearance. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Wade, what's next? Um, okay, so Members of the board, I'm sorry, may I interrupt? We did work out two additional continuances uh, in the meantime. I don't know if you want to hear, put those on the record, but they both involve attorneys. So, oh, hate, oh okay. I yes, hate that's for them okay. to charge their clients. Yes. To, to wait. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, to uh, which numbers are, which cases are we referencing, Mr. Rod? Uh, sure. The first one would be number 22, HA 2022 00236 for 6123 West Pashunk Avenue. Uh, appellant Jacqueline Dispensa and the attorney is Vincent Melchiori. Okay. Good afternoon, I'm present. Ms. Melchiori, uh, yes, so what's what's the uh, resolution 
Mr. Uh, we are agreeing uh, there's a, some issues that we need to resolve. Uh, there is, uh, among other things, the only one I think I need to mention is that there, there may be an address issue. So uh, we're going to continue this for 30 days, uh, but we would ask that it be no more than 30 days. Um, and so either at the next uh, set of listings or within, you know, at the end of 30 days, if that's at all possible. Okay, uh, so that we will continue this matter for no more than 30 days. Okay, thank you. You said you had one more. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Yes, I do have one more. Uh, number 33, that's HA 2022 00 0014554606208 Frankfurt Avenue. Uh, appellant is Frankfurt Avenue Real Estate LLC. Uh, they are represented by Samuel Ben Samuel. Uh, he is replacing the former counsel, uh, C. Aaron Gross. Um, and we are also agreeing to a continuance uh, because, again, there seems to be a discrepancy with the address. There's some uh, confusion about whether uh, the work that was done took place at this address or the adjacent address. Um, Okay. Both of which are owned by the same person. So that's why it's a little confusing to figure out. So uh, if we could uh, get a continuance on that. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sammy, Ben Samuel, are you concur with yes. that request for joint continuance? That, that's correct. And okay. I believe he only had a, a request that it not be scheduled uh, in, what was that, the end of April, Sam? Uh, between April 5th and the 13th. Yes. Okay. So the, the, the first okay, Mr. Uh, Roderick, if you'd work with the administrative office, they'll work that out for you. Sure, that's fine. There, okay. There's no big. This is not a safety issue, so this it's no big rush when this gets rescheduled. Thank okay, you. so this matter is also continued. Thank you very much. Correct. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. Okay, let's let's return to the so list. Case number nine, hearing appeal number HA twenty twenty two zero zero two two zero eight three thousand through 3006 Richmond Street, Allen Penner. Okay, who's representing the city? Good afternoon, Amy Skiles on behalf of the city of Philadelphia. Good afternoon, and anyone present representing uh, uh, 3000 to 3006 Richmond Street, Allen Penner, Allen Penner. Anyone present? I do see a name, Allen Penner, who's muted, Mr. Waite. So if you could unmute that person. Yeah, I'm Mr. Alan. Penner. Yes. Okay, Mr. Penner, would you raise your right hand so that you may be sworn? Yes. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you give today be the truth to help you guide? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Before we begin, Mr. Penner, I uh, just want to confirm with you, uh, who's the owner of 3000 to 3006 Richmond Street? I am, sir. Is that as your name as an individual or in a corporate name? No, it's individual. Individual? And your name is the only name on the deed? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Giles, let's proceed. Yes, and I do have one uh, witness today, Inspector Anthony Williams. Okay, Mr. Williams. Uh, unmute yourself, sir, so that you can be sworn. Here. Okay, raise your right hand, sir, so you do you swear or affirm the testimony you give today be the truth to help you God? Yes. Okay, thank you. Ms. Skiles? Yes, thank you. Okay, Inspector Williams, uh, where are you currently employed? Um, Code Enforcement, License and Inspections Unit, North District. Okay, and how long have you been um, employed in that role? Four years. And are you familiar with the property uh, located at... Uh, 3000-3006 Richmond Street in Philadelphia? Yes. And how are you familiar with that property? Well, it was a part of our large commercial vacant um, program inspection, and that was one of the inspections uh, properties that I did. Okay, so you personally inspected the property? Yes, the exterior of the property, not inside. Okay, and did you observe conditions at the property uh, that were in violation of the Philadelphia Code? Yes, um, we, we had it listed as vacant at the time that I was there for the inspection. It did not appear to be occupied by anyone. And the other violation was the address identification. Okay, so if I may now uh, share my screen. Yes, please.
Okay. Inspector Williams, can you see what has been marked as a uh, city exhibit one? Yes. Okay. And so what is this, uh, what is this document? That's the notice of violation. Okay. And this was issued to the subject premises uh, on Richmond Street? Yes. And what was the, the date of this notice? I cannot see the screen is. April 9th, 2022. Okay. And what were the violations that were issued um, to this premises? Um, that they must obtain a vacant structure license and that they must uh, provide address identification. Okay. Now I'll scroll down to city exhibit three. Okay. So can you see a uh, city exhibit three? Yes. Okay, is this uh, the subject premises? Yes, that's the front. Okay, the front. And you initially uh, visited the property on April 8th, uh, 2022? That is correct. And at the time of your initial visit, did the property appear to be vacant? Yes. Did you see anyone in, inside of the property? No, also knocked on the door, no one answered. Um, at that time, it just appeared like a vacant property. Okay. And so you didn't see anyone entering or exiting the property? No. Okay. And did you have an opportunity to complete a reinspection recently? Yes. I was and just when, there last Friday. Go ahead. Okay. So that was um, March 9th, 2023? Yes, that is correct. And is this photograph uh, a picture of the property as it appeared on March uh, 9th, 2023? Yes. And so did did the property all continue uh, to appear to be vacant um, last Friday? It looks the same as it did um, in April. Okay. It, and so did you see, did you try knocking on the door? Could you see anyone inside? I couldn't see anyone inside. Um, I didn't knock on the door that day. I did see that they had put up the address identification. So I was able to comply that violation. Okay, but it's your, uh, based on your inspections, the property still appears to be vacant? Yes. And at this time, is there a vacant property license on file uh, with the department? No. Okay, let me stop sharing. And so at this time, Inspector Williams, is the property uh, still in violation of um, the initial notice of violation? Yes, I mean, because they, although they complied the, the address ID, we still have it listed as a vacant property and it doesn't have a vacant license. So either we need to see that it's occupied or it needs to be a vacant property license. Okay. I have no uh, further questions for Inspector Williams at this time. Hey, Mr. Pinner, do you have any questions of uh, the inspector based on his testimony? Uh, not based on his testimony, uh, no, sir. Okay. Uh, Ms. Giles, do you have any additional witnesses? No additional witnesses. I would just ask to move the city exhibits into the record. So move. Okay. All right, Mr. Pep Pennant, give us your side of things. What is your case? Okay. The, the uh, business is occupied. Basically what's happened, I basically run this business by appointment only. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I'm 73. I've been on the street for 50 years. And with COVID, a lot of my customers are staying home. So basically, I leave the property and I buy appointment only. I even have that on uh, on Google, that uh, showroom by appointment only. It's uh, occupied. In fact, I'm here right now, although the store basically isn't open most of the time. There's merchandise in here. And I do receive deliveries from time to time. And I just basically run the uh, run the store by appointment only. I keep the gates down just for safety safety reasons. Okay, so what kind of business is it? It's a floor covering business. Floor covering business? Yes, sir. And do you uh, sell to the public, or is it only a uh, whole business to business kind of? Uh, no, we sell we sell we sell to the public. Okay, uh, and what is the name of the business? It's a uh, Penner's. It's uh, the actual. Uh, Technically, it's Penner's, uh, Penner's Floor Covering is the name of the business. Okay. And do you have an active revenue department account? Yes, I do. Okay. You filed taxes in 2022? Yes, I do. In 2021? Yes, I do. 
Okay, from that business and from that address. Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Uh, you have any other evidence or information you want to share with us that would uh, help us, that would make your case regarding that being an active uh, business? You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, don't, I'm not prepared to have the, uh, the federal ID numbers right now. Uh, I can produce them uh, in, in, you know, momentarily, but uh, I'm in the... Uh, I'm in the showroom right now, and uh, basically, uh, you know, I do run it as a business. I pay, I pay corporate taxes. I pay the PA sales and use tax. Okay, uh, but now okay. keep in mind, yeah. Mr. Penner, uh, today was the I'm day sorry. to have whatever information you needed to have to make your case, not later, but today. Uh, so this is your appeal. Uh, well, Ms. Scouse, uh, do, you, do you have any questions of Mr. Penner? Yes, Mr. Penner, do you or do you occupy the the subject premises at every week? Well, basically, what I do, people call me on the phone and they mm -hmm. want to come down. They want to make an appointment to come down to the showroom, to look at some carpet. And a lot of times, I go out to the home to look at the carpet to uh, to uh, estimate the the jobs. So, I guess my question is, how many days a week are you are you at the office? It varies. Uh, most, I would say I average about two to three days a week, but it could be not full days. It could be an hour here, two hours there. Okay. I have no further questions. I have a question. Just one, one, one question, Mr. Chair. Oh, wait, wait, Mr. Williams. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Washington. Mr. Pincus, then Mr. Washington. Okay. Everybody came in at the same time. Mr. Pincus? Mr. Penner, um, after you received the violation notice, um, did you call the inspector uh, and or anyone at the Department of Licenses and Inspections and ask them to come out and meet you at the property and verify that you're still in business there? No, I didn't. I didn't realize the issue was whether or not I was in business, but whether or not it was just a big property, which is why I put the appeal in. I didn't realize that I had to... Uh, to testify that it is a running business well when you as far as i was concerned when, when when you get a violation notice it lists the name of the inspector um it gave a phone number 6830575 did you um did you make any effort to contact the city and try to figure it out with them no, I didn't. The reason for that, sir, I just realized the issue was the mailbox and the vac and being it was a vacant property, which I felt just wasn't vacant. If I uh, felt that the issue was whether or not it was a viable business or an active business, I would have called. Thank you. Mr. Washington? Just real quick, um, Inspector Williams, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, the violation notice. Did you remove the must maintain vacant property violation? No, I did not. Okay, could you tell me what, when, when you put down must maintain vacant property, what do that mean? Um, that they just, if, if it's up there, there has to be clean, it has to be, um, you know, just, just nothing around it at that time. Um, when we wrote the violation, that's usually we paired those two violations together because it was, you know, at, I think at the time there was a uh, some some trash out there, but I didn't, I I, I should have complied that one too. But the only thing that really is open now is the vacant license. I mean, the okay. vacant. Thank thank you, uh, Mr. Williams. No more questions, Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, Miss Miss Scouse, uh, would you mind uh, your exhibits? that uh, show the front of the building, yes. the entryway, uh, particularly the, the ones that were taken this year. Would you mind putting that up? And yes. Mr. Pinner, I'd like you to uh, to comment on that when we have it up. Well, while she's doing that, Mr. Pinner, how long have you been in business? Uh, we've been on the street for 70 years and uh, I've been here for, for approximately 50 years. Since Are you the only? Are you the only person in the business uh, at any given time? Yes, have, I am. You don't have co-workers or employees or anyone else there? I I uh, basically am here most of the time. And when I, uh, sometimes I use a subcontractor, but most of my business is, is uh, cash and carry. 
Okay, scroll that down just a tiny bit, Miss Skiles, if you would. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a fire hazard. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, that's what I want to ask. Mr. Penner, what is that that we're looking at? It's probably some uh, crumpled up paper that I use just to block the view coming into the store. I received some merchandise uh, there. Is that the front entrance or the rear entrance? That actually is not an entrance. That's basically just the door where I uh, store uh, merchandise. But that's a, that's a landing. There's a, there's a railing there that appears to be a door. That is a door, but it's that, that particular door is, is just basically, that's sort of used as a warehouse, that building. Okay, so that door is on what street? That's on Richmond Street. Is that not the main entrance to the building? No, the, the main entrance to the building is, uh, that's, that building is three, uh, 3000 and 3002. And the, the showroom is uh, 3004 and 3006. Okay. Uh, Ms. Gowns, do we are those buildings connected internally, meaning the walls are, uh, you can pass from one to the other? No, they're uh, separate. They're separate. Okay. And so that's your warehouse where you, uh, you receive your deliveries? Yes, sir. And the other location is your showroom? Yes, sir. Ms. Giles, do we have any photographs of the other, of the showroom entrance? I, scrolling through, is, I see there's a door here. No, that's, that, 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 that's that, the last picture, I think it's the last picture. Uh, Not the first one, the last one. That. Is this the entrance to the showroom, Mr. Penner? No, it's, no, it's not. That's a side door in Indiana. I know that's where it's always secured. Now that's where the air, where the air conditioners are. That's the entrance to the showroom. Okay, that's so that's like where... a red steel. That's sort of like a red steel door. Okay. That's okay. the entrance to the showroom. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that's the only uh, photo we have of that showroom entrance, Ms. Giles. That yes, uh, it is. Okay, now uh, the inspectors, uh, if you could come back one more time, just want to clarify something, uh, Mr. Williams. Um, Mr. Williams, uh, that entrance, can you look through that in th those windows and see into the showroom? Yes, through that part, yes. And what do you see when you look in? It looks like a storage of uh, supply, like, like, like flooring supplies. That they on uh, display racks and that sort of thing? Yes, on that okay. side, yes. Okay. Mr. All right. Chair, Thank I you. I do have a question. Yes. Uh, yes, I have a question for Mr. Penner, and it kind of uh, piggybacks on the question to Mr. Williams. Um, Mr. Penner, you store supplies of carpet and um, items for flooring, such as uh, glue and coverings, anything that is basically, a chemical in basically, there? Basically, the showroom is where I'm at right now, actually, is, is basically all all samples, you know, with displays where people can pick out different colors and different floors. It's basically a, a showroom. There are no solvents or things like that, glue or anything? No, no, no there's no, uh, no solvents or anything like that. And no carpet or anything, just samples? Uh, basically, yeah, just samples. I may every once in a while have a partial cut off or something like that that came off of a job, but basically it's all samples. Do you have a, a um, active current fire alarm system in there operating and working? Yes, I do. It's a hard alarm. It's been installed there a while ago. And certi current certifications with the alarm system? Uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know if the certification is current or not. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it is. Okay. That's one of the things the city is concerned about. Are you connected to another building or residential homes or anything? Uh, yeah, there's a uh, there's an apartment uh, upstairs, <clears throat> and that's why it was hard alarmed in the first place. Okay, so there are occupants up there. My my my, my parent. My, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to know if there are any occupants upstairs in the residence. <laughs> no. Okay, but there is another building next to it 
uh, residential building next to your property on either side? Well, yeah, there's the, uh, <laughs> there's, th there's 3008, which is a residential building that, you know, they're all, well, you know, it's a row homes and, you know, area. So hmm. they were all suggest, square fronts. So. Yeah. I, I suggest you let the inspector in to verify the alarm uh, current certification to make sure it will operate when necessary and not malfunction. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Mr. Williams, any reason why he didn't call uh, Mr. Penner and do an interior inspection? Um, no reason why I didn't. I didn't know to, to reach out to him. I mean, we wrote the violation and, you know, it was a vacant. So we, we okay. that he would reach out to us and see what was going on. Okay. Uh, I think there's... Uh, Mr. Penner, just one moment. Uh, Mr. Williams, I, I think an interior inspection would be good. And it'd be great if you could uh, arrange that. Mr. Penner, it's your responsibility to call the inspector. When you get a violation, that's serious. You can't just ignore that. And you, if you had followed through, we may not have been here today. <laughs> if you had I, called ap I apologize. I really just thought it was the fact that there was a, just to uh, verify that the building was not vacant. Well, you do that by inviting the inspector to the interior of the building. You can prove it quickly. Okay. That's okay. my, that's my Mr. mistake. I apologize. Well, Mr. Penner, if you had that building and the pictures I've seen show all the windows covered with mesh wiring, the one door you said was for the warehouse looked to have three or four locks on it. And, and, and the interest of the city is to not have vacant properties. And if you're saying you have a viable business ongoing, the building sort of looks like it's all closed up and and there's not an operating business. And it seems that the city's interest is in having people walk on the streets, go to businesses that are open. And your building looks particularly uninviting to the public. Um, and it seems that there, there's this dichotomy here and the possibility that with that one door that had all those locks, if there's a fire, I don't know how anyone gets in to put it out, or if anyone's in the building, how they get out if all those things are locked. I mean, that's just my well, observations. Well, the, the situation is when you have a, uh, a building like that and you have merchandise inside, it's basically uh, there for security. In fact, before, before, it, uh, before, before I used it for a warehouse, it was actually a state liquor store and they were the ones that had the uh, the gates on that window or the, the iron mesh on that window, and I just kept them on. It's uh, not there to really keep out the public. It's it's there basically for security reasons. And I know what you're saying, and, and you're right as far as being inviting, but basically speaking, sir, I'm the only viable business on this street. The, the, most of the stores have all closed up. They're doing a lot of uh, gentrification and rehabbing in the street down the road. And uh, like I said, I'm not using, I know it's not the law, but I'm 73 years old <laughs> and I'm basically uh, doing this more like just keep myself active. And, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to hang it up. We've been here a long time. I have customers that call me over the years and say, Oh, I'm glad you're still in business. And basically, it's uh, I apologize for for the uh, for the appearance and everything, but it's you know it's not something that's by design. Okay, Miss Giles, has there been any check of the revenue record to determine if, in fact, that business is a, a going concern? I uh, have not been able to check that. Okay. All right. Okay. Does anyone have any uh, any additional questions? For uh, Mr. Uh, Williams, Mr. Penner, I recommend highly that you call uh, the inspector uh, to okay. uh, to set up an opportunity for them to come out and inspect your building. That may uh, be one way to resolve it. Okay, that, that, not not a problem. Okay, all righty. We'll Mr. we'll call the vote, Mr. Chair. Before we yes, vote, sir. we go into a brief executive section. Session. And okay. if I just could make a, a final closing remark, uh, yes. the vacant structure license requirement under the code is for any structure that lacks a habitual presence 
um, there would need to be some sort of consistent occupancy to not need the vacant structure license. And I think through Mr. Penner's testimony, his occupant see of this structure is sporadic uh, and limited at best. So it's the department's position that a vacant structure license would still be required uh, given the sporadic nature of his presence at the building. Um, and we'd be asking for a city affirm today. Okay, thank you. Me, Mr. Uh, Chair, are we yeah, gonna go into the breakout room? Yes, uh, we're going off the record for about five minutes. It's now 3.46. Uh, we will come back at about five of. Ms. Rob, when you're ready, we'll let me know when you're ready to go back on the record. Yes, sir. I'm ready for you. Okay. Uh, we're back on the record regarding um, HA-2022-002208. That's 3000 to 3006 Richmond Street, Allen Pinner. After hearing uh, uh, the testimony and uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Amy Scow's final argument, closing argument, uh, is the opinion of the board that we want to I know that I think the best way to move forward in this matter, there should be an interior inspection. And so, Mr. Penner, what we're advising you to do is to do whatever is required of the city to comply with city code. And so you need to consider the uh, paperwork required for a uh, vacant property. Uh, if you say it isn't vacant, you need to do what's required to make it appear not to be vacant. Uh, so we want to continue this case for uh, at least 60 days, and we want to give the inspector a chance to do an interior inspection. So Mr. Penner, reach out to the inspector, ask him to come in and do an inspection. That may solve most of your problems. Okay. Yes, sir. So, Ms. Giles, we're going to continue this for 60 days. Yes, I have no objection to that. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. Okay, Mr. Wade, what do we have next? That brings us to case 12, hearing appeal number HA 2022 002352, Jesus Ruiz. 2455 North 5th Street. Good afternoon, okay. Board. Dejane Davis on behalf of the City of Philadelphia. Okay, uh, we have the, that also is uh, the next case is also yes. the same address. Same address. Um, and with regards to this matter, um, we all have agreed to continue in this matter for about 90 days. There was some additional information that the city um, received. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, someone has a background problem. Yes, that's Mr. That's Mr. Ruiz. Um, okay. uh, the city uh, obtained just obtained some new information just right before the hearing. Um, and uh, we had I was able to have a discussion with Mr. Ruiz as well as Mr. and Mrs. Alvarez. Um, and we have agreed to a joint continuance uh, with regards to this matter for 90 days. Okay, uh, so let's do this. Uh, would you unmute um, Mr. Uh, Raymond and Esther Alvarez, please? Uh, Mr. Yes. Alvarez, would you raise your right hand so that you may be sworn? Raise your right hand, sir, so that you can be your right hand. The other hand. That's his right. That's his right. Because right. now, he, now he's raising his okay. right. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give today be the truth to help you God? Do you hear me, sir? He's muted. Not anymore. Mr. Alvarez, do you understand what I'm saying? I do. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Jesus Ruiz. Uh, Mr. Ruiz, I'm not sure. Uh, Mr. Ruiz, I'm not going to ask you to, to unmute yourself because of what you have some serious background uh, interference that's disruptive. So, excuse me, based on the representations of Mr. Davis, that there was a joint 90 day uh, continuous, we will put that on the record. So I'll read both cases in, okay? Uh, case number 12, HA 2022 North 5th Street, Jesus Ruiz, that matter will be continued for 90 days. Case number 12, uh, HA-2022-002354, 2455 North 5th Street, Raymond and Esther Alvarez, that matter will be continued for 90 days. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, that's the case number 13. Number 13. Yeah, number 12 and number 13. Yes. Okay, my apologies. Okay. 
So those matters will continue. Mr. Alvarez, this matters continue for 90 days. You are permitted to leave today. Uh, likewise, Mr. Ruiz, uh, it's been continuous, so you can leave today. Thank you very Thank much, Ms. Davis. You're Thank welcome. You. Have a good day. It's my business. May I be excused? Yes, ma'am. Have a good afternoon. Okay, what do we got? Case number 18, hearing appeal number HA 2022 002201, Reach Community Development 2017, East Allegheny. Okay, uh, who's representing the city? Uh, oops, sorry, hi. Uh, may it please the board, Leonard F. Reuter for the city of Philadelphia. Okay, good afternoon, Mr. Reuter. And who's representing uh, the appellant? Good afternoon, Stephen Botiglieri, Council for Reach. Good afternoon, Mr. Botiglieri. How are you? Okay. Uh, Mr. Rudder, do you have any witnesses today that need to be sworn? Uh, yes, I believe so. Let me just pull that up if you give me a moment. Sorry, I didn't think my case would come up this quickly. Uh, yes, Francine Griffin. Okay. Miss Griffin? Yes, I'm here. Uh, you, would you turn on your, your video, please? It's not working. Okay. Uh, are you in the office? Is someone there could assist you? Uh, I'll check. I can't get my video to come on. There's probably a slider on your camera. There's a slider on your camera if it's a city device. Uh, Mr. Rutter, is are there other matters that we can uh, handle prior to the inspector coming on? Uh, you mean with this case right or? Oh, oh, okay. There she is. Okay. Ms. Okay, Griffin, looks, can you would you mind changing the your name then, please? I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, I'm that using, is. yeah, because I'm using. Someone just did it for you. It's, yeah. it's just been changed. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, would you raise your right hand, Ms. Griffin, so you may be sworn? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you give today be the truth to help you God? I do. All right. Thank you. Can you place your hand down, Ms. Rodder? Uh Yes. Thank you. This uh, matter concerns. Uh, similar to the previous case, a vacant property license, a property that was cited for not having a vacant property license uh, upon inspection. So if I could just briefly um, go through uh, the testimony. Uh, Ms. Griffin, um, you've been sworn in. Could you just state uh, what your position is uh, with the city of Philadelphia? Um, I enforce the property maintenance and fire codes for the city. Okay, and are you familiar with the property at 2017 East Allegheny? Yes. Okay, and uh, have you reviewed the record and the file for this property? Yes. Okay, were you yourself at the property? Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go through, uh, oops, sorry, uh, if I can share my screen. Yes, please. Thank you. It's take me a while. Hopefully, I won't crash. Doo, doo, doo. Okay. Can you see that? No. Can anybody see that? Yes. Now the, the image is up now. Ah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, there's always seems to be a delay on, on the other side. So uh, what are we looking at here? That is the property at 2017 East Allegheny Avenue. Okay, and it appears to be uh, a church building originally? Yes. Okay, and when was this photo taken? That photo was taken, I believe. Or I could do it this way. If you could, if you could read the date and time information on the bottom of the photo. You can see the bottom of your photo, but on my April 4th, 2022. Uh, okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I'm showing another photograph. Uh, yeah. Again, does this is this do these does this photo and the uh, previous photo uh, accurately de depict the property as uh, you've seen it? Yes. Okay. 
And what is this a picture of? That is a picture of one of the entrances, um, I believe on the left side of the church. Okay. And um, this looks like it was taken at the beginning of this month, uh, around March 3rd. Is that a, something that you would have taken? Yes. Okay. And could you just describe um, how it appeared to you? Were you able to look uh, above uh, where yeah. the paper covering is? No. Just let me run their bathroom for two seconds. I'm sorry. Okay, just for a moment. Uh, Miss Griffin, is that background noise in your area? No, it is not. I think it was Mr. Wade. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. My apologies to everyone. That's okay. Um, so, and then I'll show you another. I think I have another photo. Okay, this looks like this was uh, taken more recently, but again, still the same church. And based on the, the time, when we're, do you remember the days and times of the week? Uh, like what day of the week and what time? Uh, that, was, you, that picture was taken on March 3rd. I don't remember what day that was, but March 3rd, um, around 10.30 a.m. Okay. And did there appear to be any kind of activity at the location? No. Okay. Have you ever been able to enter? No. Do you know if any prior inspector was able to enter um, for, for, the, for, for this violation? Okay. No. And are the all of the windows and doors, uh, do they, at least on the ground level, do they appear to be covered? Um, the doors on the left side um, are covered with cardboard, but there is a picture. Um, I don't know if you have the picture on the right side. Um, the, the entrance on the right, that one. Okay. That one was not covered. And as you can see, that's the entrance on the right side of the property where there's like trash and debris in the entrance area. Okay. Uh, and when you look uh, at this time, when you did your inspection, was anybody present? No. Okay. Uh, did you knock or anything? No, because it appears that it looks vacant. So. Okay. Um, and again, what you you looked in, you didn't see any persons. Didn't seem to be any activity, uh, as far as you could tell. No, not at all. Okay. Now, uh, what are we seeing here? That is the, I believe, the initial violation notice. And what was the date that was issued? Um, April 5th, 2022. Okay. So this is uh, approximately just under a year ago that this was written. Yes. Okay. And then what are we looking at here? Those are the violations that were issued. And was this uh, the final violation notice? That is the final violation notice, yes. Okay. And since that time, uh, have you has anybody representing the property owner reached out to L and I? Uh, other than this appeal, has anybody reached out to L and I um, in terms of applying for the vacant property license or asking for a reinspection or anything of that nature to demonstrate no. that they no. don't need? No. Okay. All right. Well, I have no further questions for you. I'm going to stop okay. sharing unless the board needs. Does the board need to look at any of these? Uh, no, we, we will ask uh, if there is any cross examinations. Uh, yes, Dr. there is. Cagliari, you have any cross examine? Uh, yes, briefly. Thank you. And my apologies for mispronouncing your last name. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, that's fine. Um, yeah. On the May 3rd, 2023 picture, which goes through um, as you testified to the right door of the church, uh, you say there was some trash. Um, did you also notice the cleaning supplies in the upper left hand corner of that picture? No, I did not. Uh, but do you see? If I may interrupt, Mr. Botagliari, if I'm saying it correctly, I think you said May 3rd, and I believe the inspector testified that the inspection was made on Mar March 3rd. March 3rd, yes, I, I stand corrected. That is 100% correct. It was March 3rd of 2023. I apologize for that. Which was 10 days ago, approximately. That, yes. Uh, now, uh, you. Did you receive my May 13th, 2022 email regarding this property? Um, 
uh, Mr. Tagliari, I'm going to ask you, though, uh, this is cross-examination on what on her testimony. So when you put your case on, you welcome to well, bring that in. Yeah, um, I was asking because she testified she did not receive any communications. So I was. OK, all right. That's fair enough. Yes. If, you know, because I sent an email. So yeah. that, Ms. Griffin, all. OK, Miss Griffin, what's your response? What was that date again? Uh, May 13th, 2022 at 3.13 p.m. Um, I don't recall, no. Okay. Uh, and the property at issue appears to be a church, correct? Yes. And did you uh, stop by the property on a Sunday morning for any part of your inspection of this property? No, I don't conduct inspections on Sunday. Okay. Would you agree that the property appears to be as of March of 2023, uh, free of uh, most debris on the outside and the grass maintained? Yes. Um, Did you, uh, well, if you, if you didn't, did you, re do you recall seeing the street numbers that were posted to the property in May of 2022? No. And did you notice the electronic sign located in front of 2017-2023 East Allegheny Avenue? Yeah. And that's uh, stating that there's a church located at that property? Um, I didn't see that on the electronic okay. line, but. Okay, uh, I have nothing further on cross, thank you. Thank you, okay. Uh, just a real quick brief redirect, just one question. Yes. Um, uh, Inspector Griffin, um, if a the vacant property license is for uh, a vacant structure. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So if a structure is vacant, but somebody is still maintaining the exterior of the building, do they still they still need the vacant property license? As if the vac if the structure itself is still vacant, isn't that right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I have a, I have a quick question, Mr. Chair. From yes, Mr. sir. Griffin. You classified that the windows on the face of the building on the left hand side is covered in cardboard, I think you testified to. Is that on the inside of the property? Yeah. Are you speaking to me? Pardon me? You're speaking to me? Yes. Yes, that was on the inside. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rowe, do you have any additional witnesses? I do not. Okay. All right, sir, let's go uh, move on then to Mr. Battiglieri. Pronounce uh, that one more time for me. Battiglieri. Uh, Battiglieri. Chairman, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I have uh, one witness to call, Pastor yeah. Joel Barnaby. Okay. Is Pastor Barnaby, uh, you're muted. Okay, there you go. Uh, do you swear a firm testimony you give today be the truth to help you guy? I do affirm. Yes, Thank you. you. Place your hand down. Thank you, Chairman. May I proceed? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, Pastor uh, Barnaby, uh, what is, uh, are you the corporate owner of this property at issue? That is correct. Reach Develop Community Development Corporation. I am the president. And uh, you are a nonprofit organization, correct? Yes, a certified federal exempt C3 corporation. And uh, this property uh, is a church. Is that it correct? It is a church, yes. And uh, church services were traditionally held on what day of the week, sir? On Wednesday and Sunday at 11 o'clock. P. Eleven a.m. Uh, this property uh, has you've maintained the property from the outside, correct? Correct. And the church services were held on the inside of the property. Yes, correct. I have some other photographic 
uh, pictures that I took uh, that may help bring some bearing and light and understanding to the this circumstance. Well, uh, so showing the, the inside. And, and the church services are held in the basement of the church. But there are three levels to the okay. property: the basement, the first floor is where we occupy, and the upstairs, which is still under renovation. And uh, the sign, there's a, an electronic sign as well as a static sign at the front of this church, correct? That's correct. And it announces the name of the church? Yes, the name of the church and the times of the services. And it's an ongoing moving time. It, 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 it displays the digital time of the day for the neighbors also. Now, this property is subject to a tax exemption appeal, correct? That is correct. It's ongoing. And that's, and that's ongoing. Did you post uh, property numbers on this property? Yes, they were on the uh, bottom left hand corner of the front main doors. Uh, looking at the church, I would call that the right side uh, on the left hand side of the glass doors. And there is a stone address for the property, which is a fixture to this property located in the center of this building, correct? Yes. Now, you do not occupy this property seven days a week. Is that correct? That is correct. But church services are held fairly regularly, correct? Well, sporadically right now, with uh, just having come through some uh, circumstances, yes, sir. Um, would that be with, due to restrictions from COVID? Over yeah, the last we were. Years? Yes, sir. Uh, we were restricted uh, from meeting publicly and gathering together uh, in the building during 2020. Uh, under order of the city, and uh, that kept us from having a physical presence there on a weekly basis. And you've had a difficult time uh, re-energizing your community, correct? Yes, given the fact that it's roughly uh, one block away from the infamous Kensington and Allegheny corners. Uh, as you can tell, this is a very distressed neighborhood uh, we are constantly dealing with homeless that are sleeping on the steps and uh, our sacred edifices of our city seems to almost be a uh, a target if you're not constantly monitoring it and so goes the continued problem of of graffiti hoodlums uh tagging the building regularly if if you recall, do you recall the initial notices that were sent? They were sent to 410 Peters Way, Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, correct? Yes, that's an att attorney's uh, address. And that's your former counsel's home address, correct? Yeah, as we've come to learn. And, and <laughs> so the never... notices were not sent to reach community at 2017 East Allegheny Avenue. Is that right. correct? And we maintained a P.O. box. Now, um, in May of 2022, you received a, an email from me, which was the email, a forward of the email I sent to the city of Philadelphia. Yes, I received that from you. And that contained the photographs that you took of 2017 East Allegheny Avenue. Yes. And those photographs showed that the grass was cut the trash removed and the property signs posted, correct? Correct. I have nothing further. Okay. Uh, any cross examination? Uh, just very briefly, um, Pastor Barnaby, um, how long has Reach been operating at this location? Uh, at this particular location, now the ownership, the title of the building changed. Uh, to reach Development Corporation because I wanted to uh, 
get funding from different modalities that would address the delinquent behavior in the city. I have contracted with the city of Philadelphia in the past under cross connection family services. No, I, I just would, well, let me let me put it this way. Let me rephrase the question. How how long has Reach been operating out of this location? Under the name of Reach, uh, pro approximately five, six years. Okay. And within the past two years, um, what do those operations consist of at this location? Like, what do they actually do at this property? We were holding uh, services during this entire course of time, uh, uh, Council, holding services uh, almost on a nightly basis with drug and alcohol rehab programs, and it came a, a counseling program center. Wednesday night was a, a targeted Bible study service. Uh, we would have a food outreach program on Saturday mornings, and then our regular uh, dress up Sunday service on Sundays. Okay. And that uh, was taking place back in um, March and April of 2022? Yes, at that uh, 2022? No. The no, okay. it wasn't used that actively. Okay. Um, was there a period of, now leaving aside the COVID uh, period, so we'll say up to uh, from January of 2022 to the present, um, was there any period of time when essentially no operations were taking place? And I don't yes. mean individual days, but were there were there blocks of weeks or months where where you were essentially not operating at this location? Right, that is correct. We were not as active as we once were. Uh, so because of the strain of the neighborhood and uh, problematic uh, people not feeling like they wanted to be saved or needed to be heard about salvation, which is my job, con the congregation has waned in attendance. Okay. And the church upstairs, is that uh, leased by a separate um, congregation? No. Or maybe a no okay so the, so so the reach basically your offices are downstairs but the services take place upstairs or in i the, might have misunderstood at this basic street level the middle floor okay and that's where the historic chapel is correct right. again okay. i have some pictures if it helps to bring clarity to everyone what the inside looks like i i think i have a good idea if the board okay. wants to see those that's I, I don't i don't have a problem with that if you fear if your attorney wants to, wants to do that but um i'm going to suggest to the board uh I, I don't have any further questions uh and i can just do a quick closing um because i think mr bodelieri said that that he didn't have any other witnesses is that right but no, okay uh, uh, but I do have uh, there may be one or two questions that the board will let. Let, let us see if there's, some, in addition to myself, there may be others who have questions, uh, Mr. Rodder. Uh, I, I did want to check in with Pastor Barnaby. Pastor, the signs that were referenced uh, to, in the exterior front of the building, what do they say? The main fixture part of it, and it's illuminated from the inside, it says Greater Church of Philadelphia. The scrolling part, which is the digital electronic moving board message board, uh, states the time of the day, the uh, service times during the course of the week. Okay, so if someone were to follow that sign and go to that building on those times and dates, what would they find today, this week? They we had us had to put a paper sign up on the window telling them to call my number directly uh, to for further information about when we were gathering together, when our next meeting was. Because okay. a lot of the congregants from the neighborhood are, and those that would drive in were just frankly very terrified and scared of the neighborhood. Okay, it's I understood. And, and so are you the uh, ordained pastor of Greater Church of Philadelphia? I am, yes, sir. Uh, how long have you been the pastor? Uh, 25 years of, and was that, uh, always the location of the greatest church of Philadelphia? 
No, uh, my parents started the church 2400 block of North Broad Street, removed to Second and Gerard, 1233 North Second Street, where most of my life I was raised. And our church was located in the middle of the block in a row house. And then we moved to this property approximately 30 years ago and began fixing it up to save it from being an empty parking lot and try to restore this historic landmark. Okay, so uh, you moved to that location 30 years ago. And how often and how long did you actually have Sunday morning services at that location? Continually. Uh, rain, sleet, snow, you know the mailman's motto. Uh, and throughout the week, continually, up in, until COVID and the restrictions from the city to say you need to stop meeting, congregating okay. together. And so you didn't offer services uh, uh, virtually? Yes, uh, Zoom service, and that's been going on since then. Very okay. Active. Okay. Well, what? what uh, how would you characterize your church denomination? We're a multicultural, transgenerational. I want to be careful about that word here. I'm asking for more of a doctrinal definition of. Uh, oh yeah, the more of a Baptocostal. I would call ourselves Baptist Pentecostal. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Anyone else have any questions? Mr. Chair, I have two questions. One for Pastor Barnaby. Pastor Barnaby, good afternoon to you. Yes, sir. You, test you testified that you was having renovations done on the top floor? Yes. Did you apply for any type of licenses or permits for the renovations? Yes, I think there there's, uh, when we acquired this property, sir, the rear wall was completely blown out and empty. It looked like a great big airplane hangar. We did. We applied for uh, reconstruction of that wall. We had that professionally done and completed, and one seventh of the roof was reattached to that wall. Uh, since then, and we had to have a stay from the city at that time in order to. Uh, uh, meet compliance with the reconstruction and the ongoing uh, rehabilitation of that particular building. So um, there's scaffolding set up on the top floor, reaching the roof, but uh, all of those permits have waned and just become dormant until we get past all this, uh, the riffraff of what we're going to do with the property and if, if our livelihood to stay there. So I've just kind of halted that. So there's no current permits? No. On the property? No. My sir. next question is to uh, your attorney. I think uh, Mr. Bougier. Yes, sir. Sorry, I apologize. Check me. Okay. Uh, you, you, you had testified that notice was mailed out to his former attorney. It was mailed That's out. That's why he didn't get them, because I'm looking at his notice in order to correct dated uh, April the 5th, 2022, mailed to 2017-2023 Allegheny and, Avenue. And that appears to be some kind of uh, document created after the fact and not the document sent to uh, my client's attorney's, former attorney's home address, which the document I have, um, which is the same date, date of notice, April 5th, 2022, is mailed to Reach Community Development Inc. 410 Peters Way, Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, 19460. But Mr. it's regarding- Wade, could, Mr. Wade, could you clarify that for me? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I meant you're asking me to clarify the violation notice or the- The dates that he's and the addresses that he's using, or should I put that to Mr. Rupert? Well. well Let's if start. I, actually, actually can, before we do that, uh, I don't think there's any issue of timeliness noted, no. uh, Mr. Rada, right? No, so, that's correct. And I was, uh, I mean, they, they did, Mr. Uh, Patiglieri's uh, letter came to, and, and appeal came into LNI uh, just under the gun, but it was timely. So we're not making uh, an issue out of timeliness here. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Bougieri. I'm going to mess it up anyway. And thank you, Pastor. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. Uh, good afternoon, Pastor Barnaby. Um, when you say you hold virtual services, are they held from within the church or are they held from somewhere else? 
they were held within my home here in the Northeast on a Sunday. Uh, it's by Zoom gathering, just like we're gathered here today. I see. So the church isn't currently isn't being used for religious events or religious uh, not, activities. Not on a continual, regular basis because of okay. the haphazard way of the course of life. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Baudieri, uh I guess this is maybe an odd question to you, but I'm wondering what is the the uh, your client's appeal based on? Because there, I don't I don't know if you submitted any information in return that that shows active programming in progress or specific dates when the last food drive was held or stuff things of that nature. Can you give us a bit more clarity on that? Yes. Uh, so when I sent my email. Uh, to the city of Philadelphia, I was waiting on a response. Um, when I got this notice, um, I did reach out to my client, uh, but the initial notices were regarding maintenance of the property. Um, so we quickly filed the appeal, luckily, uh, and we were concerned regarding the uh, maintenance. So I uh, hopefully we've been able to show that that's been uh, remedied as well as the sign. Um, and with my client's testimony today uh, to show that he is actively engaged. Uh, when I did not receive a response, um, much like we're waiting on an inspection now from uh, on our tax exemption appeal, I assume this was just taking time to work through the system and I would get a contact by the city of Philadelphia when they were available to further discuss the matter. Okay. Any any other questions from anyone? Yeah, I just, I, Mr. Botagliari, your email was sent in May of 2022. Um, you haven't pursued why you didn't get a response between May of last year and um, whenever you received the notice for this hearing, which would have been within the last several weeks. Yes, I, I would have to go through and check to see if I sent a follow-up email. As we're proceeding with our tax exemption appeal, uh, it was filed. But the tax over, exemption appeal would have been filed with a different part of the city. That, that is correct. That and, wouldn't have been with the Department of Licenses and Inspections. Uh, no, that is correct. It's a different entity. Um, I, was, I did ask uh, regarding an inspection and was told an inspector would reach out. Uh, and that was it, sir. Um, but I do not have a set date or time of a follow-up email, uh, and so I, I cannot answer your question regarding a date or time. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Me just one final question. Yes. Did you ever apply for the vacant uh, structure license? The, uh, the application no. was not submitted as my client was planning on and using the property. Okay. okay. Uh, now, uh, is there what's the record show in terms of the updated fire alarm systems, et cetera? Those those are those actively in place and monitored? Uh, that those were that that is not subject of uh, this matter, um, partly because we haven't done an interior inspection. Okay. Um, but that's you know those those aren't the subject. Uh, if there are an, if there is an issue, that's not the subject of this appeal. But what I would like to suggest um, by way of closing is um it does seem possible if not likely that there was or there have been periods of time in the past where the property was not being actively used for periods perhaps as much as three months which is um as prior council had indicated uh there needs to be habitual occupancy and uh or that the uh, the, the property has ceased being used for a three-month period so that may have take that I think it's possible. I don't know that we're going to have specific records of that, but it seems very possible uh, that certainly the, the property wasn't, uh, and as it's been stated, has not been used uh, consistently, partly because of dwindling congregations and other matters. Um, what I would suggest is pretty much what the board did on the other case is, is we would agree 
to have to set up an inspection where we can go out and do an interior inspection so somebody would need to let uh the city in we can see what's going on uh and make a determination based upon what we're seeing inside as to whether there's uh, been any recent activity uh keeping in mind that once we do an interior inspection some of the other issues that uh, the board um raised might come to the fore, although that would be a separate matter if there are other violations. Uh, I do want to note that there was uh, a building permit issued in January of 2022 uh, to do work uh, to make repairs and stuff to the property. Uh, if you have an active, that permit's no longer active, as Pastor Barnaby indicated. If you have an active building permit and you are doing work and repair work, you don't need the vacant property license while that permit is 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 active. So um, if they if they if they are going to be vacant, but they're going to be doing work, then they would and they did that under a valid permit, then they could uh, they wouldn't need the VPL. And Mr. Rutter, what are you suggesting in terms of continuing date? Continuous? Um, I, in terms of timeline, I, I don't feel that there's a safety issue here. Uh, whatever uh, works for the board um, is fine with me. I don't think there's a huge rush to get it back in. And if we or a, if we go out and we make a determination after an interior inspection that it is not vacant or no longer vacant, um, then, you know, we can just inform the board that it's, you know, now moot complied at some point. We wouldn't need to come back at all. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Battaglieri, what is your yeah. view in terms of a continuous date? It's a general um, question. Wait, 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 uh, I'm sorry. Just I'll forget Mr. Battaglieri's response, then we'll Thank go you. to you. Uh, yeah. It, <clears throat> if we could... 90 days, I think that should be enough time to have an inspection, have someone come in. If there's additional work to be done, uh, fire extinguisher out of date, we could get those other issues remedied. Um, okay. All right, Mr. Senate. Um, I'm going to pass to Inspector Griffin. She has her hand up. I'll let her oh, ask. Make well, she doesn't get again. to ask a question unless she her, her, ask, you're correct. She, she doesn't get to ask questions unless I, her, thank you. I, I can ask her. Uh, uh, Inspector Griffin, do you have additional testimony you want to bring? Yes. There is a current um, case from the contractual services unit. Thank you. Um, thank you. For unsafe structure, exterior structure for the main roof. Mr. So, Chair, that's what I was going to speak to the reference of. Okay. My, my question was directed to Mr. Router. You mentioned that there's an active permit, but that active permit is an unsafe permit, meaning that it is a permit, but you have to verify, you have to rectify the unsafe of the building before you could proceed with anything. And that is still actively open and has not been complied. Is that the permit you're referencing? <laughs> active uh, permit that is there no i i said that the per they do not currently have an active permit there was a permit issued in january of 2022 but it's based upon the information that we received from uh pastor barnaby that is not currently active um but that's an unsafe permit which has not been rectified that's what inspector griffin is referencing mm -hmm. that changes the whole matter altogether. Okay, well, let's do this. Uh, uh, Miss Miss Griffin, uh, would you mind stating for the record what permit you're referencing? I'm, I'm, I'm not referencing a permit. I'm referencing um, a case, case number 580115. Um, and it actually, I think it's dated all the way back to 20, 2017. And then I think there was a reinspection done in 2022. And that case is still open. Okay. That's a separate, okay, that's a, that's influencing our decision today, but a separate matter. Okay. I would just like to note for the record as these discussions are taking place and dates and descriptions of the permits are being mentioned, it appears that Pastor Barnaby is nodding his head I guess acknowledging the the statements that are being made regarding uh, these perm this permit and the dates. And Mr. Chair, I, I want to stand. I want to stand corrected. 
I said permit, Mr. Router, and it is violation, unsafe violation. So I stand corrected. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pincus, were you done? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Given that we do have some active uh, cases still pending in this matter, uh, and which may or may not influence the other matters that are pending, uh, what I'm going to suggest then, and as the chair, if we continue this, but I don't want to go 90 days. I'm, I'm suggesting that we continue this to 30 days to give the parties. I want parties to be sufficiently motivated to resolve any outstanding issues to get that stuff tightened up. Uh, and then before we uh, call it a day on this matter. Okay. So please note the record that we'll continue this and we'll continue for maximum 30 days. Thank you. Thank you. April 25th. Uh, yes, that'll sure. work. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. No, uh, what's you. next? Excuse. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, I believe that's all of mine may be excused. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we do have a matter. Uh, Mr. Wade, I'd like to move on to number uh, 41. Griffin too? Yes. Oh, she left. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, what uh, number? 41. Did we resolve that one? We resolved both 40 and 41. Okay. All right. No, that I, was a five I, uh, they were both dismissed, one for timeliness, one for failure to prosecute. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay. And just real quick, I had number uh, 21 as marked as moot. I believe Mr. Kelly read that into the record. I do see a Mr. Um, Theodore Tillman on, on the call still. I didn't know if he was on here observing. Just to let him know that I believe his matter was marked moot. Um, Two six seven. Yeah. Three four two. How you doing? I was on here earlier, but yes. How you doing? You need me? Just call. So your case was was settled earlier. Yes. Thank you. All right. I'm leaving. Apologies. Thank bye bye. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so what do we have next, Miss Wade? Before we move on, Mr. Wade, did you say forty one was dismissed for time in this? Timing this? Okay, yes. I just had it down here no standing. I don't know why that was there. Yep. That was part of our the conversation, but we resolved it uh, to use timeliness for 41. Okay. Uh, case, what do we number, have? case number 23. Hearing appeal number HA 2022-002539. Garisha Mills, 5419 Malcolm Street. Okay. Who's representing the city? Uh, members of the board, Jeffrey Cohen for the city of Philadelphia. Good afternoon, Mr. Cohen. Uh, is uh, anyone present representing uh, 5419 Malcolm Street? Uh, I uh, do see Gashira Mills, uh, the appellant. Uh, she's muted at the moment. Uh, if we can okay. ask her to unmute. Ms. Mills, can you unmute yourself? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, uh, would you raise your right hand so that you may be sworn, please? Yes. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you give today be the truth to help you God? Yes. Okay, now there, place your hand down. There is one issue, though. We can't make out your image. Uh, I'm not oh. sure it's because you're sitting in front of a... Sorry. Wrong account. That, that, that helps a little bit. Okay. Uh, the lighting is, is uh, affecting your yeah. image. Yes. The, the lighting isn't very well in here. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cohen, do you have any witnesses? Uh, yes. Uh, Inspector Sean Howard of L&I. Okay. Mr. Howard. I see the inspector. Uh, he needs to unmute and turn on his camera. Just one moment. Oh, Mr. Excellent. Howard, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you give today be the truth to help you God? Yes. All right, thank you. Place your hand down. Okay, Mr. Cohen. Thank oh, you. No, uh, before we start, my apologies, Mr. Cohen. Uh, okay. Ms. Mills, uh, a preliminary question to you. Uh, whose name is on the deed of the property at 5419 Malcolm Street? Mine. Is anyone else's name on the deed? No. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, Mr. Cohen. Thank you. Uh, Inspector, uh, through the course of your duties at l and uh, had you come to inspect and review the records for 5419 Malcolm Street? Yes. Uh, and if I could share my screen, uh, I'm going to share the exhibits packet that I put together uh, and sent to the board and the appellant. 
Uh, can you see my screen, Inspector? Yes. Uh, when you were reviewing the records for LNI, did you review what's currently on page two and three and four of this packet? Um, two. No, I, I'm not, um, that was that was another inspection for two, three, and four, I believe. Oh no, I mean, did you review what the other inspector did? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and are the photographs on pages two through four, are those the photographs of the other inspector? Yes. And were those taken in the course of that inspector's duties? Yes. And that's something that LNI keeps in the ordinary course of its business? Yes. Uh, looking at, well, looking at the first page, page two of this exhibit, is this 5419 Malcolm Street? Yes. Uh, and scrolling down to page, let's just scroll down to page four. Uh, is this the rear of 5419 Malcolm? Yes. Uh, what, if anything, can you describe in this photograph on page four? Um, this is, that is raw sewage, I believe from a clogged drain. Uh, would that be, I guess there's a, a brown sort of circular mass that looks kind of, kind of caked in the middle of the photo? Yes. And it's just to the side of this downspout? Yes. Uh, now, did you inspect this property yourself recently? Yes. Uh, and I'm going to scroll just past the notice of violation for a second uh, here to page 10 in the packet. Uh, are these your photographs from March 8th? Yes. And this is the same property? Yes. Uh, and scrolling down to, let's take a look here at uh, page 12. Is this the same area that we saw in the other photo? Yes, that's the area from the uh, lower level from the first floor um, uh, living room window or dining room room, I believe. And what's this dried caked substance to the side of the downspout? Um, it looks like some type of debris or dirt, I believe. Uh, and would that be indicative of sort of the same issue, but because March 8th was colder, it's sort of more dry? Um, yes, it could be pretty much the same, I would believe. Uh, now, have you reviewed LNI's permitting records for this property? Yes. Uh, and have any plumbing permits been pulled to fix the sewage issue? No, it has been not. Uh, and I'm just scrolling now to page 13 in the packet. Is this a search of LNI's public permitting system uh, for this property? Yes, this is. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to very quickly go up and verify. Is this the notice of violation that was sent to uh, Ms. Mills at the subject premises? Yes, I believe. Yes, this is the notice of violation. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to enter these exhibits, C1, the photos from May of 2022, C2, this notice, uh, C4, the photos that were taken on March 8th, and C5, the permit search. Okay, so move. Uh, and at this time, I don't have any further questions for Mr. Howard, but uh, if Ms. Mills has any questions, I can leave the photographs and exhibits up, and she can tell me uh, where she wants to go in the packet. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Mills, do you have any cross-examination of uh, the inspector? Uh, no, I just wanted to say that the uh, photo... No, no, if you, no, no Ms. Mills, if you, if you don't have any questions, that's okay. No, I don't. Okay, in a minute, then we'll ask you to give us your understanding of what's going on, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Cohen, you have any other witnesses? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, the city rests. Uh, at this time, I'll stop sharing my screen, and thank you very much, Inspector Howard. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Mills, so give us your understanding of what happened, what's going on at your house. Uh, well, back at, back last year, I did have some sewage problems in the back. Uh, uh, it wasn't backed up sewage. It was uh, like grease buildup. So, but since then, I, ha I have uh, obtained the um, home serve plumbing um, plan, and they came out and resolved the issue. And the uh, dirt that you see is kind of like dried up mud back there around the drain. Uh, the, the, but I, I have since cleaned the backyard and I have had the uh, plan in place for a while in case I come into any more plumbing issues. But that so, issue has been revived. Okay, so what, what evidence do you have with you today to prove your point? Uh, I just have the evidence of my home service plan 
what what evidence is that you ha you haven't submitted anything have you did you submit anything uh with your uh, appeal uh i just submitted the page that i've uh, seen in the mail when i first got the violation and sent the letter with it that i thought that was uh, the response and then this then i got this letter for court today do you have anything from the plumber who did the work to indicate what he did and when he did it uh no i i can i can get the information from my home sir uh yeah, well today was your day you you've submitted the appeal so today is the day you come prepared with all your evidence correct you want us to vote in your favor you have to give us evidence that you've done what was required of you okay i i well, I thought, oh, I'm sorry. This is my first time going through this. I wasn't really sure on how to proceed about everything. So, so what 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 date did the plumber come out and what did he do? Uh, they came out and they uh, snaked the back of the uh, the backyard. They drained that drain that you see that was clogged up. They they sent the a, a wire down there and declogged it for me. And okay. I took all the leaves leaves and mud around it what date did that happen uh that was uh about uh right before christmas sometime uh I'm, I, don't, I don't have a, a exact date but i can get all this information uh, okay we need it now as we speak oh, uh, Man, this is Ken Washington. May I ask a question? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. I want to, I want to uh, direct my question to Inspector Howard. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Inspector Howard, did you just testify a few minutes ago that you think that was still grease? Not that it is still grease. That is not that you know it's no, I'm sorry, not grease, sewage. Did you testify a few minutes ago that you think it's the same? Not that it is sewage. I just want to be clear on your testimony. No, so I testified that is the to still is kicked Pardon up me? debris. It's kicked up debris in front of the drain. But that's but is that sewage or is that kicked up dirt? No, uh, that's it's just kicked up dirt debris. I didn't say if it was grease or anything of the sort. Okay, no, that's why that's why I'm trying to get clear. I'm just want to get clear. I don't want to put no words in your mouth. Right. I want yeah, to get it's clear. Kicked up, kicked up debris. All right. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Uh, just to follow up, if I may, um, I'm trying to find, because I did receive a copy of the exhibit package, but I can't locate it right now. From what I observed, that pipe that, that's being referred to that Mr. Washington mentioned looks to me more like a drain pipe rather than uh, a drain pipe from the roof as opposed to a sewage drain. It looked like a gutter, a downspout, actually. Um, are you able to either put up that picture again, Mr. Cohen, and have us? Uh, yes, look of course. And and try to confirm if it's a drain pipe. It, it seems to me it could still back up oh, and sorry. need to be cleared, but it may not be creating the same issues as if it were a uh, sewage pipe. Well, actually, hold on. Let me put up uh, the photograph here on page four. I think it's more clear here from the previous year's photo. You can see the downspout which this white piece of downspout, which heads out into this drain, but then there's a separate sort of, uh, I guess, liquid or whatnot that's accumulating elsewhere. That's, uh, I believe, another drain or indicative of another drain that's clogged. Mr. Can you Pickers, go back down to the, the, the other picture? Yes, of course. Mr. Pickers, uh, can we stay there for a second or come back so I can explain to Mr. Pickers? Yeah, yeah, we'll oh, come sorry, back to I... it. We'll come back to it. Thank you. Yeah. That's the more recent picture that was taken a couple of days ago. Is it any way that we can zoom in on that area? Uh, we can zoom in, but unfortunately the image quality uh, will stay about the same. So this I think is the best that we can see close up. Is that the same location, Mr. Cohen, as, as the prior photograph? Yes, and you can tell because this is the, as you can see this is the white downspout headed out into this drain pipe. Okay. Uh, this location just to sort of just to the side of it is where there's a bunch okay. of Okay. I think if you zoom up to debris. the other location, if you if you scroll up to the location, you're gonna see a dramatic difference in the images. Just scroll up for a moment. Uh sorry, one moment. And again, I apologize for the image quality. Uh, here we go. 
it's a whole lot different. Oh, come out. You're too focused. Come out. See, that's the difference in terms of uh, the drain pipe as well as that other one had a surface rain leader attached to it. This one doesn't. Uh, they're two different locations. Yes. The height is different also, Mr. Yeah. Yes. You have to cast the height of the under drain. Yeah. Yes. And if I may, on this, go ahead. Yeah. And on this Please. one right here, to explain to Mr. Pincus, this is a downspout that's connected to an under drain. That under drain is connected down into and under the house and it connects either into the interior of the basement, which now connects to your sewage, which leads back out to the front of the house to the sewage drain. That's how properties are built with these under drains. So it runs off the roof down to the under drain and through your property, either steel or CVS, black steel, and then out to the main drain. So that's why if you're having any kind of a backup, sometimes it backs up there as well as on your front. Okay. Uh, I, I just want to get to the to we can get to the resolution of this, uh, Ms. Mills. Why didn't you connect with the inspector once you got the work done? Uh, I'm sorry. I I didn't. I wasn't aware that I was supposed to do that. Uh, this this is uh, my father's house that I just took over, and I'm trying to resolve a lot of things in here since I took it over. So, uh, but I didn't know I was supposed to uh, reach well, out had- to the inspector. And well, that when I got it got it done, but I did. I was trying to comply with all the hearings and stuff like that. Well, if you I get a violation notice and you make the repair, then you should let the city know that you've made the repair, so the violation can be removed. Yes, when I when I first received the violation, I did try to contact the office and the numbers that was on the letter and reach out and try to uh, find out what the next steps were. But uh, during that time, I also was working on resolving the issue in the back as well. So I'm sorry if I didn't communicate that. uh, Okay. All right. And Mr. Howard, when were you last at the uh, location? Um, March 8th, 2023. That was my my only time at the uh, location. Okay. And did you see any standing water or standing um, uh, sewage? No standing water, no sewage. What's that's what's in the picture? That's all I seen. Was there any sm- a foul odor of sewage? No odor, no smells or anything. Okay, all right, thank you, uh, Mr. Cohen. Any closing argument? Uh, actually, if I can make a suggestion as part yes. of, I guess, a request for relief, closing argument. Uh, I believe if Ms. Mills has some documentation from the plumbing service that she used, and if we are talking about instead of caked sewage, if we're talking about just some debris that's fallen and can be easily removed, that we, the city would then request a city affirmed with a 30 day stay of enforcement so that Ms. Mills can get in touch with the inspector, can clear the remaining debris or or caked mud off of that, uh, that drain so that the inspector can see whether or not it's been cleared. And also so she can provide the documentation of the service that she used to the inspector so he can confirm what was done. Okay. Um, that way, hopefully, we would then basically put this to rest during the next 30-day period. Okay, thank you. Any other comment before we get to a vote? I have a further question. Ms. Yes. Mills, is the proper, are you living in the property or is the property occupied presently? I am living in the property. And using it and uh, all of the plumbing uh, fixtures are operating properly and safely? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All righty. We would then poll the board regarding HA-2022-002539-541-1 Malcolm Street, Kashira Mills, uh, City Affirmed with a 30-day stay of enforcement. City Affirmed 30-day stay of enforcement, unless the majority of people think maybe a little longer might be appropriate. Uh, well, let's do this. Enforcement. Yeah. Before we continue to vote, before we continue to vote, I, uh, my prerogative of the chair, just for a moment. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Pinkers, I think that probably requires a little clarification. Uh, are you suggesting that we, what time would you suggest? Maybe 60 days. Okay. Uh, we will strike the previous vote and, and I'll restart the vote. City affirm a 60 day stay of enforcement. City affirm 60 day stay of enforcement. 
City Affirm 60 Day Stay of Enforcement. Thank you, Mr. Pincus. City Affirm 60 Day Stay of Enforcement. City Affirm 60 Day Stay of Enforcement. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Mills, what we've done is affirm the, the violation because in fact, based on testimony, there was a violation when they did the inspection, uh, but you've since gotten it repaired. So we're asking the city not to take any further enforcement action for 60 days. You should be in touch with the inspector and give them all the documentation that you have indicated you've made the repairs that you testified to, okay? Yes, sir. That should make things go away. Have a good evening. Right. Thank you, members of the board. Uh, before we all go, can I make sure that uh, Ms. Mills has contact information and can reach sure. out to the Illinois district? Yes. Uh, yeah. Inspector Howard, if you could just give her like the district's phone number so she can reach out or an email address or something. Okay. She can um, reach out to me at Sean, S-H-A-W-N dot Howard, H-O-W-A-R-D at phila.gov. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Inspector. Okay. Right. Have a Mr. good chair. Evening. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, as a request from the city for uh, their to lose their witness, can we call case number 39 next? Yes. Okay. This is case number 39, hearing appeal number HA 2023 000888 2652 North 30th Street, Laquina Taylor. Okay. Laquina. Laquia. Okay. Uh, who's representing the city? Good afternoon, Amy Skiles on behalf of the city of Philadelphia. Okay, Ms. Taylor, are you present? She was present. Yeah, I do I... see she's logged on. That's Laniqua Taylor. We just pronounced it incorrect. Laniqua Taylor. Laniqua Taylor, anyone representing... Um, she's there. 20. She's on there. She's muted. And okay. don't look like anyone is sitting. She got like a jacket on with a green stripe on it. Okay. Uh, I don't see that person, but okay. Okay. Uh, I did yeah. see you moving around a number of times during Ms. the Taylor. hearings. Uh, Mr. Wade, maybe someone can call her phone number or something. Give me one second. Sure. Uh, Ms. Giles, what's the nature of this cease, by the way? It's a, a property that's been determined to be unfit um, okay. for occupancy. Okay. Based on a, a few a few things. Is the appellant the owner or a tenant? The tenant, the okay. occupant, not the, the owner. occupant. Okay. It looks like Ms. Taylor is, yep, yeah, maybe there. Okay. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Taylor, please unmute yourself. How are you doing? Uh, okay. Uh, would you raise your right hand so that you may be sworn? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you give today be the truth to help you God? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Skiles? Yes, I do have one witness um, for this case. It's Inspector Anthony Williams. He is on the call, but his uh, screen had been changed uh, to Inspector Francine Griffin before, so he is. Okay, present. Mr. Anthony Williams, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you give today? Be truth to help you, God. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Skiles. Yes. Okay, Inspector Williams. Uh, where are you uh, currently employed? Um, license inspection code enforcement north district okay and how long have you been employed there four years okay and are you uh did you come to be familiar with the property at 2562 north 30th street yes and how are you familiar with that property um on january 26th uh, a training inspector and i um 
this, uh, handled a complaint for the property and we found violations there. Okay. And what type of violations did you discover at the property? Um, there were a couple of PM violations, you know, for missing handrails and and uh, ceiling damage. But the ones that that were that we uh, wrote the intent for were for the raw sewage that was discovered in the basement and the jumped out electrical meter. And the the when we did the research, we discovered that the water was uh, not an act not in not an active service. Okay. And so when you said you wrote the intent for, that's the intent uh, to cease the property. Yes. Cease, oh. operations. cease operations. Okay. And now with the board's permission, I will um, share my screen. Okay. Okay. Inspector Williams, can you see what has been identified as a uh, city exhibit one? Yes. And what is this document? That is the notice of violation that goes out. Okay. And what was the date that this notice was issued? January 28, 2020. Okay. okay. And uh, there are a number of, of violations listed on this notice, but the ones, could you repeat the ones that um, are concerning and that the department would want to cease the property for? Um, the the legal water service through through Pico, the the, the legal electric. Um, there there are a couple there are a couple water water violations that go along with that, and there were two uh, electrical violations for the illegal electric and the raw sewage for the ones okay. that want to intend to cease. Okay, so based on those violations, the department issued an intent to cease operations. That is correct. And what was the date of that intent to cease? Well, the date it was issued was the 27th. The 27th, and it was scheduled to go into effect March 2nd? Yes, that is correct. Okay, but the department uh, waited for the outcome of this hearing to, to cease the property? That is correct. Okay. So now move on to a series of photographs. Um, City Exhibit 4, is this uh, the subject premises? Yes. Okay. And this, what um, what is this document that's posted to the property? Anything that we deem unfit for uh, occupancy, we have to post it. And, and that's the part of the reason why we did that, the intent. Okay, so in this circumstances, the department has determined that this this property is unfit for human occupancy. In the yeah, in the state that it was at that point, yes. Okay, is it still unfit for human occup occupancy? Um, there the raw sewage has been complied, that's been taken away, but the electrical issue and the water issue are not complied, not uh, complied at this time. Okay, and so this photograph here what does this photograph uh depict the, the electrical meter box okay and it, it is does it appear to be operating in this in this picture no and um with the subsequent call called to pico we uh found that there was no active service on their end at this at this time okay do you know how the property is obtaining electric no i do not okay And this, oh, what does this photograph uh, depict? That's the basement near the water heater. And that's where the uh, sewage was observed on the ground. Okay. And are there any violations depicted in this photograph? Besides the, 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 the cracked window, no. Okay. And now this photograph, uh, are there any violations depicted in this photograph? Clog drainage clogged drain was this uh drain clogged with raw sewage or was this clogged with some other debris that i believe was other debris that was the backyard so it, it was other debris okay and have you had uh in these photographs your initial inspection that that took place on january 26 2023 yes and have you had the opportunity to re-inspect uh the property Yes. Okay. I was out there, uh, I believe, March 9th. March 9th, 2023. Okay. And so this is the basement as it appeared on March 9th, 2023? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And you say that the, the raw sewage has been removed from the basement? 
Yes, there's still residue, but the the, the raw sewage has been removed. Okay. And then what does this photograph depict? That's the damaged ceiling from the uh, leak that's coming from the, I guess, the patio above it. Okay. And that leak would be from uh, the roof drain. that clogged well, drain I, that we I, previously I, saw? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And is is this that clog drain or is this a separate clog drain? Yes, it's a, it's a part of how that, that drainage goes down. It runs onto that patio and then there's a small hole right there that it goes down. But all of that is running running above that room. Okay. Okay. I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, so at the time of your last inspection on March 9th, was there a legal water service to to the subject premises? Not at the time. Um, the, the the tenant says she was working on it, but not at that time, no. And what about legal electric? Is there currently a legal electrical hookup to the subject premises? Not at that time. Okay. So it, does the department still wish to proceed with the, the cease on this property? By by our standards, we still, you know, that would still be what was, was intended to do because we deemed it unfit and, and, and unsafe situation. Okay. And that's due to the lack of... Uh, illegal water and illegal electrical hookup. Yes. And because there's no water and electric, this would pose health and safety concerns to any occupants of the property. Well, there there is obviously water and electric, but you know the because it's not done in I guess the the legal way. We don't know in what way that it is operating. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what danger it presents because we don't know how it's hooked up or how it's running. Okay, I understand. Okay, um, I have no further questions for Inspector Williams at this time. Okay, uh, Ms. Taylor, do you have any uh, questions of Mr. Williams based on his testimony? You will have a chance to tell us your side of things later, but for the moment, do you have any questions? No. Okay, thank you. Any other witnesses, Ms. Giles? No other witnesses. Um, I would just ask that the city exhibits be moved into the record. So moved. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Taylor, tell us what's going on in the property. Okay. Um, I moved in here on October 11th, 2022. Um, within a month of me being here, um, I had started to um, smell um, feces and stuff coming from the basement. I then notified the um, rental office, um, Flores Rental and Management, LLC. Um, nobody then came out. Again, um, once I went to the basement um, in November, um, I went down there, I told them, I took pictures, I told them there was feces and stuff down there and I would pay them rent and that could they be able to come out and fix it. Um, they, they, came, they came out, um, they refused to get a plumber. Um, when they did get a plumber, um, they had said something that it was supposed to be about white, um, which um, we knew it wasn't about white. First, they told me that um, the pipe was broken and that we would be that I would have to move. And I told them, like, um, would I be able to at least get my security deposit back to help me move? Because I do have three girls, um, three kids, and. Um, Ever since I've basically been trying to um, save up enough to move, being as though I had just moved, I called Ellen and I myself to come out to come and see the problem. Um, it's not the fact that um, I cannot move. It's just the fact that with me being here, I have been in contact with um, a lady. Her name is Charlene Houston. She's from um, Keller Williams um, Real Estate. Um, she sends me listings about every other day and I go look at at least five houses a week. Um, her cell phone number is 267. Oh, no, 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 don't, there's no need to do that. No need to put anybody else's. We don't need that, I guess, on, on the public record. Okay. Uh, but, okay. Sorry. Yeah, um, but we do have a couple of questions for you. Is the, is there a water service to the property legally? Um, well, when I moved in, they told me that they would pay the um, water, and uh, so I didn't have to worry about the water, but the water was on when I got here. Is the water on now? Yes, the water is on. 
so you have sufficient water for bathing and cooking, et cetera? Yes. Okay. Uh, what about do now the bathroom fixtures are working and the kitchen fixtures are all working? Yes, everything is working. Um, some stuff does leak, but everything is working. I have okay. um but what about uh, uh the electric? Do you have electric? Is that working? So I called, yes, I do have electric. I had called when I first moved in here to get um peak, um, is it peak, I believe, um, to yes. come out the electric. Um when they did come, they said that it was too much sewage in the basement for them to even do it. So that's when I have reached out to the landlord about getting it all fixed. So when they did, when they did come back out, they were able to say that, you know, it was no meter down there. But being as though it's raw sewage down there, that they would not be able to put it in until it get cleaned up. OK, so who pays the electric bill? Um. Right now, it's under floors management. So the, the landlord pays the electric bill? Yes. OK. So right now, you can plug in. You, you have power for your television, and you have cooking facilities, et cetera. You have heat, correct? Yes. OK. What, How kind, what, what kind of heat do you have? Um, I have the um, heaters that go on the wall, the electrical heaters. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Woodson. Yeah, please. please. And uh, excuse me, Mr. Chair, can I confirm that Ms. Taylor was sworn in? Yes, she was sworn. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Taylor, do you have a written lease with uh, the landlord? Yes, I do. Okay, what are the dates of that lease? Um, the the dates were from October. Um, I'm sorry. The dates were from October 11, 22 until April 11, 2023. It was only okay. a six lease. Okay. And have you given them notice that you're planning to move? Yes. I told them that I was um, moving and they told me that I need, I should vacate the property so that they would be able to fix um the ongoing situation. Okay, so this is your expect. So your plan is to move. You don't have any desire to, to continue to live there. No, I don't have any desire to um, live here. But um, with me living here, I've had to get the um, basement clean, and I've had to pay for another jetting to get done because it was feces and sewage um, coming outside on the on the sidewalk and still inside the basement. And you know, I had to pay um, four hundred and twelve dollars for that, and then for the basement to get clean, I had to pay um, twenty five hundred. So with me being in here, you paid that out of your own personal resources. Yes, because why I did kids. you do that? Why did you do that? Because I have kids in here. And um, on, on top of that, I'm trying to find somewhere to stay with my kids being in here. My landlord refuses to fix anything. They okay. don't want to fix nothing. They just want me to get out of the property. But with me being in here for, you know, to, to, to keep it safe for my kids, I have to pay that and still have to have money to try to move as well. Okay. Are you um, continuing to pay monthly rent? No, that's my my rent is actually in um a bank account. Um, you put it in is, escrow. You put rent, um, you paid the rent into escrow. Is that what you did? It's not escrow. It's just in my bank. It's just in my account. Um, this. So you haven't paid your landlord. Is what I'm at. Are you paying the landlord? You stopped paying the landlord. No, no, I stopped um paying the landlord. I have um my paperwork for that um right here with my account and my balance okay. on there. Yeah, we can't see that from that way. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? Yes. The heaters that you say you have are plugged into the walls. Do you own those heaters or were they provided by the landlord? Oh no, no, they're not plug in. They're um they're the heaters that you that um you can still turn on, but you know, they're just like one for each room, like the little baseboard heaters, I believe they are. Yeah, th there's uh, it sounds like it may be those through the wall systems uh that are designed for yeah. limited space yeah zoning here yeah yeah as opposed to one whole house heater there's right. multiple uh, uh units both air and heat uh can be generated from those units uh miss yeah, taylor so what's 
was the house allegedly renovated before you moved in? Was it a house that was renovated or something? Um, I I'm actually not sure. When okay. um when I did go down to Eleanor, it had that the property had a license to be vacant that is not even supposed to be, you know, rented out. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions from anyone? Uh, Ms. Ms. Gowns, I do have a question. Given what we've just heard from the from Ms. Taylor regarding the access to water and access to heat and electric uh, <laughs> and her desire to move, I'm not sure where we are in terms of executing a, a cease. The department's concern is we didn't ever doubt that there was electric and heat being supplied to the house. So the main concern is that based on LNI's inspection and research, these aren't being supplied legally. Um, right. I'm not sure how the water and electric is, is getting to the house, which is why uh, the department has deemed it to be unfit and deemed it to be, a, you know, a danger to the safety um, and health of any occupants because we have no idea how this electrical is, is getting into the in into the house if it's if it's getting there in a safe manner. Um, so that's why we would want to move forward with the cease as soon as possible because uh, it's the department's position that this this property it is not safe at this point. Okay, uh, and that, Mr. Williams, question for you: uh, Is that meter still missing from the uh, electrical system? Yes. So what they do? Jump the meter? Uh, they, they they jumped it to, to create a positive uh, flow of electricity into the house? I'm not 100 percent sure, but I, I mean something had to be done to it. Okay, so that is the source of the power in the house is that that uh, that line as opposed to some other way. They're running extension cords next door, anything like that. No. Okay. All right. Any other any uh, other uh, comments? Ms. Taylor, is it are you and your daughters the only people living in the property, or are there any are there other people in that property? No, it's just me and my daughters, and mainly um sometimes well, mainly I take them um to my mom's house like as much as I can. Um, so most of the times I'm not in here, but do sometimes I do have to come here and you know lay my head or stay here at times. So that's that's one reason why I really need to um to 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 stay here just until I find somewhere to go. Okay. Uh, you're living in a dangerous situation with the, the with the way the power is and also the plumbing. Now I know you've used according to your testimony, you use your own personal resources to clean things up, and so that gives you. I mean, that's for a legal matter between you and the landlord, so you can deal with that. Uh, but we still have this cease operations order that's in place. Okay, uh, but do we do? You do need some time to get out. So I know you're actively looking. Uh, okay. Any other questions before we pull call the vote on this? Um, okay. no, but Pico does come, come out this week. I did have somebody come out and they said they could come out this week once they read everything to put a meter in. So, um, I'm just not sure of the date on that yet. Okay. Okay. And is the deceased Miss Giles would be imminent or what's the planning and timing? We, we would like to move forward as soon as possible. It was scheduled to go into effect uh, March 4th, and we, we waited for this hearing, but it is uh, the position of the department that the property is unsafe, and we would like to move forward with the cease as soon as possible. Okay. And Pico is scheduled to be there tomorrow, Ms. Ms. Taylor? No, not tomorrow. They said um, sometime this week they will reach out and call me, so I'm actually not sure exactly which day this week. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, what I'm proposing then is, uh, if there's no is there any final argument, uh, Ms. Uh, Skiles? And nothing further. Okay. Ms. Taylor, anything further you want to share with us before we vote? No, that's all. Okay. Mr. Chair, can we have a brief executive, very quick one on this? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank we you, will. Sir. It's now 524. We will be back at 530. We're going to take a quick. Um, Ms. Rob, we're back on the record. Uh, yes, regarding... sir, okay, thank you. We will poll the board on HA 2022 5419 Malcolm Street, Kashira Mills. Oh, my apologies. Strike all of that. My apologies. I'm reading the wrong. 
uh, case. This is number 39, Mr. 39. Chair. Thank you. <laughs> uh, regarding, uh, start anew. Uh, pulling the board regarding HA-2023-000888, 2652 North 30th Street, uh, Laniqua Taylor. Uh, city affirm uh, with a state of enforcement to March 31, 2023. Okay. Uh, would everyone join me in a vote, please? Uh, you're muted, Mr. Yep. Pincus? I'm sorry. City affirmed stay of enforcement to March 31st, 2022, 2023. City affirmed stay of enforcement to March 31st, 2023. City affirmed with a stay of enforcement until March 31st, 2023. City affirmed stay of enforcement to March 31st, 2023. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for participating. Uh, Ms. Taylor, the best of luck for you and your kids, uh, that you find something soon and quickly. Uh, and thank you, everyone, else for your participation and your patience. Have a good evening. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Okay. Chairman, if please. I could please interrupt. Oh, sorry, Richie. No, go ahead. Uh, my witness for case number 37 needs to leave by 6 p.m. Uh, I apologize, there's been a lot of this today. Is it possible to call case number 37 now? Yeah, uh, just one moment, I believe Thank so. You. Mr. Wade, where, where are we now? We have uh, case number 24, we have case number 26, we have case number 32, and we have case number 37. Okay, uh, 30, oh, we... Okay. Gee, I have 32 listed as listed in error. Yes. Well, no, 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 no. 31 is listed in error. 32, I had, uh, it. there was some discussion we needed to have with Lennon for it. I had it as continued with a possible resolution. Yeah, we, we continued that for 90 days. For the 90, but let's go to 37. That was the request. So let's do that one, and then okay. we can resolve those other matters. Let's call number 37. Case number 37, hearing appeal number HA 2022-000911-4813 Alcott Street, Walter Yorlotowski. Thank you, members of the board. Jeffrey Cohen for the city of Philadelphia. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Cohen. Uh, Mr. Uh, Jeffrey Yorlotowski. Walter Yulatowski. My apologies, Walter Yulatowski. Okay, uh, Mr. Yulatowski. Okay, uh, Mr. Cohen, you have any witnesses? Uh, yes, the city would call Clip Inspector Martin Higgins. Mr. Higgins, uh, are you present? Yes. Okay, would you raise your right hand so you may be sworn? Your right hand? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give today be the truth to help you God? Yes. All right, thank you. You can place your hand down. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Cohen? Yes, uh, I'm going to... Sorry, I'm going to share on my screen the exhibits that have been uh, sent previously to the board and to the appellant. And I just want to make sure, uh, Inspector Higgins, can you see the exhibits? Yes. Uh, have you... In the course of uh, reviewing these records for CLIP, have you reviewed the records for 4813 Alcott Street? Yes. Uh, and I'm going to go to this photograph on, uh, it's labeled Exhibit C1 on page two of the exhibits packet. Is this a photograph that CLIP saved in the course of its business of this property? Yes. Uh, and what's the date on this photograph? And if you if you need, I can- January. <laughs> January 21st, 2022. Uh, and uh, what's depicted in this photograph? So in the rear, there's uh, a piece of furniture that appears to have been there for a period of time, as well as a washing machine. Uh, and is there a broken window on this cabinet that's in this photograph? Yes. Uh, and presumably the cabinet is made of wood? Correct. Um, Metal. If you could please speak inspector are are there issues with wooden implements that are left out outside of homes uh, specifically are there pest issues that you can speak to 
they could be a harborage for rodents. Not only that, but with wood, it could be um, the integrity of the wood could uh, be in question uh, to the elements. Is there also a potential issue with termites? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Inspector's lying. That's uh, metal. Uh, sir, uh, Mr. Yulatowski, if you have another outburst, we will stop the hearing and vote. You understand? Okay. So let's move on. Uh, the next exhibit on page three. Uh, Inspector, what is this exhibit? The notice of violation that was issued to 4813 uh, Alcott Street. Uh, and specifically, the city has highlighted this exhibit. These highlights did not exist in the original. Uh, what is this highlighted sentence here in the middle of the page? And so I can make it bigger if you need. It's the order to correct. Uh, when was Mr. Ulatowski ordered to correct by? February 4th, 2022. Uh, and I'm scrolling down now to this page, starting here on page five and continuing on to page six. What are these two photographs? Uh, the rear of 4813 Alcott Street. Uh, on what date? Uh, let's see, February 10th, 2022. Uh, and was this the date that Cliff did an abatement of this, uh, the rear of this property? Yes. Uh, what else can we see in this before photograph that's on page five? So there looks to be like there's more trash in the rear. So like a both brown bag brown. sitting on, I'm yes. oh, sorry. I'm sorry, both the uh, store bag at the bottom with the cans and then the brown bag on the um, appliance there. And what looks like, is that a pizza box sitting on the uh, appliance? Like the dryer. That's correct. Yes. Uh, and then I'm scrolling down to the photograph on page six. Is this the after photo, after the abatement? That is correct. Uh, and what, if anything, was removed that this photo shows? The cabinet that was uh, in the rear of the property prior to that photo. And the bags and the pizza box and the cans? Yes. Uh, and then, sorry, scrolling down to the next page, page seven in the packet. Uh, what is this document? This is the um, bill for abatement. Uh, and when was the work performed according to this bill? February 10th, 2022. Uh, what's the date of this invoice? February 17th, 2022. Uh, and then scrolling down, uh, just to take uh, the board's notice, uh, this is the Board of LNI Review appeal form. Uh, it's dated February 15th. Uh, and you can see this received stamp is a little uh, difficult to tell, but it was received on February 18th. Yes. Uh, and I believe those are all the questions that I have for Inspector Higgins. Uh, though I will leave the exhibits up if Mr. Ulatowski would like to use them while questioning Mr. Higgins. Okay, before we go to Mr. Ulatowski, um, uh, Mr. Cohen, do you have any images of the front of the property? Uh, no, because the issue was in the rear. The only photographs that were taken were of the rear. Okay, and the photograph of the cabinet and the uh, with the other debris on top of the washer was that was that the extent of the debris in the property? Uh, I'm scrolling down so that uh, Inspector Higgins can answer that question. Mr. Higgins, was that the extent of the debris at the property? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right, Mr. Yulatowski, do you have any questions of the inspector based on his testimony? You mute it, sir. You mute it. You need to unmute. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, you have any questions it, of the inspector? Then you can, of course, tell us your side. Really quick and brief, because I know he has to go. But uh, are you the inspector or was Miss Lustig the inspector? Because when I got the violation, I saw the violation, it was Miss Lustig. So Cindy Lustig is the inspector assigned to your area, as you well know. I am an inspector and I'm testifying on the uh, record of the case. Okay, so you, as that you actually weren't at the scene. You were not there. No, I wasn't. Okay. No, I yeah, wasn't, yeah. but the photographs to the time date. Not here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Only one person speaking at a time. Uh, Mr. You're talking, yeah, Ash, of course. And Mr. Higgins, no, Mr. Higgins, just okay. for a moment. 
Uh, Mr. Yulotowski asked your question, didn't wait for the inspector to respond. Mr. Higgins, just give your answer as quickly as you can. No need to expand. Just give an answer and then we'll move on. Understood? Yes. Okay, Mr. Yulotowski? Uh, so you cannot verify that the cabinet was wood or metal. And uh, the cleanup crew is not here to verify whether the cabinet was wood or metal, correct? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> you can't verify why the cleanup crew was there for two hours taking the picture on the date stamps on the picture and whether the trash was just blown from their cleanup from the whole street or anything else like that, correct? Um, Mr. Cohn, could you scroll, scroll to the after picture? Yes, of course. Thank you. Again, the date stamps are two hours. Uh, for the record, the date stamp on page five is 1033, February 10th, 2022. Uh, the date stamp on page six, 1203, February 10th, 2022. Okay, any other questions, Mr. Unitowski? Oh, yeah. well, you know, uh, I had <laughs> I had six pages of questions from Ms. Kulustic, but she's not here. But um, because um, basically... Uh, well, we let's do this together. then. Let's do this. Wait, wait. I, I'm going yeah. to do this. Uh, Mr. Higgins, I'm going to uh, go back to Mr. Cohen, ask Mr. Cohen if he has any additional witnesses. If not, then Ms. Yulotowski, you can put your case on. on this, okay? Uh, I do actually have one follow-up question. Can we do a Inspector I mean, Higgins. Well, okay. can, I, can I speak to Mr. Cohen real quick? If you don't no, mind? no, 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 no. We don't do it that way. Okay. You're going to do it the way I directed. So, Mr. And Cohen, you have an additional. I got, I got a phone call while you were talking and I got cut off. Can well, you you, no, I said we aren't going to do it that way. We're going, I'm we're going to do it according to the existing established procedures for these matters. Mr. Cohen will, uh, has another question okay. for his witness. And, and then you will be allowed to put on your case. Okay. Examination anymore? Of the are, there, are there additional cross examination questions? Uh, let's see. Uh, hang on a second, because I prepared for Miss Lustig, and I got thrown. Uh, uh, for a... I had a question for the inspector. <clears throat> the 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 original picture showed a hutch or something. It wouldn't look to be wood. It may or may not have been, and and the washing machine, uh, but only the hutch was moved, not the washing machine. Um, which would appear to have been debris left out in the back. But was there a reason to your knowledge why that wasn't removed as well? Uh, actually, uh, Chairman Pincus, uh, though I will let the inspector answer, uh, the city was prepared to uh, answer that question in closing, but Mr. Higgins, let, uh, Inspector Higgins discuss. So the washing machine wasn't originally cited in the violation. It was just for the hutch. That I, I mean, with all due respect, it's a piece of furniture that's been left out to the elements. A washing machine has a different, um, I guess, expectation to um, deterioration. Fine, thank you. Okay, Mr. Olatosi, did you have any additional questions? Um, from my personal knowledge, the that's a metal cabinet. Uh, okay. Well, you can make a presentation in a moment. I just want to make sure your questions are for Mr. Higgins. Oh, oh, for, for Mr. Higgins, I, I, like I said, I have prepared uh, like six pages for Ms. Lostick, and, and uh, she's not here at the moment, so I can't okay. even ask those questions. So it just threw me for a whole loop where I can't ask these questions. Um, uh, is, is taking personal property codified, Mr. Higgins? Uh, I think uh, the city would object to that. I think that Ms. one calls for a legal conclusion, but also that's really part of the legal argument that is separate from the questioning, the factual questioning of this inspector. Mr. Okay. Chair. Yeah, yes. I I, wait a minute. Let, before you come in, Mr. Tin, I just want to resolve this matter uh, with the objection. Uh, Mr. Yulotowski, the, the purpose of you cross-examining the witnesses to make sure that you can ask questions that were raised in his testimony. If that uh, if you don't have any questions based on his testimony, then what I'd like you to do is to save those kinds of things for your presentation. Then you can make your own case. Understood? 
Okay, uh, look, can you give me uh, one minute just to review the questions I had for Ms. Luftick and I, and um, and then I, I could uh, see well, listen, no, no, what we're, no, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to rule on Mr. Uh, sustain Mr. Cohen's objection. Then what we're going to do is that he's going to rest his case. You can then make your presentation if you want to recall the witness for a particular reason you may do that but i'm going to limit all of this it's not going to be a long extended uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Mr. Chair, that's what i wanted to speak on long, wow you guys have a job there okay Go mr ahead. just for a moment we have another mr Tennant uh has a question yeah, mr ulitowski this is mr Tennant. you said you had six pages for inspector lustig uh um, yes in in inspector higgins and inspector lustig they're all inspectors for the city of philadelphia uh, one person's individual uh, character is is no different when your question should be applied to the inspector and the work that the inspector done. Uh, it sounds like your six pages are are personal questions related to the inspector, but the code oh. violation that they both apply and that he's here upholding is the one code that's applied to you that you're held in violation of. So your questions can be directed to an inspector, not in particular inspector in person, because it's a code violation that you are in violation of. Okay? Does that I'm make sense sure to you? I'm so, sorry, with all respect, I'm not sure how this process works, but um, uh, we've I've dealt with compliance issues with Ms. Lustig and I've sent her pictures and asked for extensions. And in this situation, it just, uh, it got lost in the mail and it got moved really fast to complete to get cleaned up within a period of uh faster than i could even apply for the for the appeal uh okay and this never happened before and okay. um and that's why i had these questions for miss lustig why it got moved so fast and uh and the other thing was the questions were um in the process of uh, she used to work with rick Sosinski where personal property used to disappear really fast. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what that has to do with that, this. That's not a fact. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. I, Ulitowski, let's do this then, because uh, I want to narrow yeah. this down. Uh, Mr. Ulitowski, uh, the, the ball is now in your court. Explain to us what the basis of your appeal is, so that, and then we may have some well, questions uh, for you. Uh, Chairman, if I could do a yes. brief redirect with uh, Inspector Higgins before he leaves. Okay, yes. Uh, Inspector Higgins, are you aware of a history of negative interactions between Mr. Ulitowski and uh, Inspector Lustig? Yes, I am. Uh, and just to review with the appliance, or the washer that was seen in the photograph, is there a similar concern with metal appliances of rodent harborage or of vermin pest harborage? No. Thank you. Uh, those are all the questions I have. Okay, uh, Mr. Lutowski, uh, let's share with share with us your your your. How do we get here? What's this appeal about? Um, the most of the time uh, I get in touch with Ms. Lustig, I tell her that I, I received the, the if, if, if I received it late, I'd say, hey, I received it late. I call the office to give me an extension. I clean it up myself with, with approval of the tenant to get it out of there because as a landlord, I need a writ of possession to take possession of their property. Uh, if I get a uh, approval saying, hey, violation, I'm gonna have to take you to court. They give me approval. They give me approval to take it out. I take it out, don't charge the tenant, and I move on. And then I send okay. the picture to Ms. Lustig and the case is closed. In this situation, it got moved so fast that I ran the appeal. Uh, I don't know whether what code is used to codify taking of personal property. I would put that up to Mr. Cohen to answer and ask for guidance as to how to proceed in these cases where my okay. tenants do things. And so let's let's uh, go back to the basics. So I think because you think I think you may have lost this. This particular property is a rental property. Correct. The it's the a, items. Section eight tenant. Okay. So the items that were in the rear of the property were did not belong to you. They belonged to the tenant. Correct. Okay. Had the tenant been evicted from the property or just moved on voluntarily? Um, there and uh, I, I've had problems with these with the ten, previous tents on this. But you did, sir. You didn't answer, so you got to answer yeah, more yeah. succinctly. The person who was there, who owned the, the stuff in the back, did they vacate the property? Did they move? No. They still reside in the property. Correct. Were they just storing those items outside, or did they, were they meant for trash? 
they were storing it. And once I spoke to them, they said, uh, take it. We don't want it no trash. more. So why didn't they put it out for bulk trash? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice, right? <laughs> okay, you know I mean? so it was it was it was trash that should have been put out for bulk to the curb for bulk pickup. No, no, because no, no. after I said you're going to be charged with these fines and everything like that, they said it. You know, and because I said you know. Okay, understood. What? Understood. That's enough. That's understood. Okay, yeah. so this was trash that wasn't put out. Uh, and was there other? Were there, how long had the material been in the rear of the house? Not not very long because how long had it. the material been in the house? Give me weeks, days, months. What outside? Yes. It could have been uh, maybe not even a week, uh, and 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 everything is metal. You could okay. you can ask Mr. Higgins to verify okay. with with the people who took the cabinet and. Mr. Yudatowski, whether it's metal or wood is not part of the argument tonight. The issue is whether or not uh, the city. Uh, took the material and whether it was done properly. That's that's the only issue. Okay. Uh, and so is that a problem that you routinely have with uh, possessions of your tenants uh, being outside? Some, I, I cannot, I, I routinely have a problem with uh, tenants putting stuff outside that are personal property. And then I can't, I can't get sued by the tenants for taking their personal property because you can get sued. Okay, and, in this instance, the door, the what tenant. I do is I contact, what I do is I go, contact. No, no, that's enough. That's enough. Sir, Mr. Yotoski, that's enough. Uh, in this instance, you've already said that this material was trash, right? Of course. Well, after I, uh, after I had a conversation with them stating that. Okay, they're it was trash. Wrong. Okay, that's it for now. Anybody have any other questions from anyone? Any other questions? Okay. Is there any final argument from Mr. Cohen or Mr. Yotoski? Uh, yes, I actually do want to put this on the record just to explain why this is a valid police power action and not a taking. Okay. Uh, I, I just want to make a record and I will be as quick as possible while doing so. Okay. Starting back from page five in the packet, I think it's pretty clear that this is a wooden cabinet. You can even see down here where the wood is sort of deteriorating and where there's, I guess, a discoloration down at the bottom corner. So... If we have something that could be a rodent harborage, that's something that actually could cause a public safety or health issue, then that falls under the city's police power. Um, I'm going to scroll down in the packet uh, down to here, page 12. Uh, this is the, the codified statutes under the property maintenance code dealing with the removal of rubbish. All exterior property shall be free from any accumulation of rubbish and garbage. It's actually part of a larger public health set of codes. Uh, so you also have PM, uh, sorry, let's move on to this one. PM 301, um, the responsibility of the owner to maintain the property in compliance with these requirements. Persons shall not occupy a property which is not sanitary and in safe condition. So that, that's the key, that this these codes are about maintaining these properties in a sanitary and safe condition. Uh, you also have similar codes about the exterior properties, PM 302.1, exterior shall be maintained in a clean, safe, and sanitary condition. PM 302.5, uh, structures shall be kept free of rodent harborage and infestation. Uh, and we did hear from the inspector that if, you know, there's a wooden cabinet out there that can be it's open to the elements, wooden, open bro. to de deterioration. Mr. Yudotowski, be... excuse me, Mr. Cohen. Mr. Yudotowski, this is the last time I'm going to warn you. Any outbursts, understood? Understood. You put on the record your view of the material, correct? Did, did you do not do that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it, it, that's on the record, sir. Okay, You've made you. your statement. Yeah. Mr. Cohen, please continue. Thank you. Uh, so this cabinet with the one of the broken windows uh, in the front and made of what appears to be wood could be a broken harborage, could cause a problem not just for the tenants at this property, but for the neighbors, for the neighborhood. Uh, we don't want rodent harborages. We, harborages. we don't want uh, termite or, or roach or other infestations caused by rotting materials, uh, organic materials left out to the elements. Uh, and sorry, there's also a PM 309 about eliminating pest in infestations. Uh, after an extermination, precautions should be taken to prevent reinfestation. That's part of this codified uh, system of statutes that not only 
prevents infestations and re-infestations, but also is meant to prevent causing the infestation in the first place. Uh, and very briefly, I don't want to get into deep, too deeply into the Blows case and the Rufo cases that I included in the packet. Those are available for the board if the board so chooses. The key, however, is um, regulation of the of a proper exercise of the police power is all about whether it is about um, doing something that is in the interest of public health or safety. Right. It's uh, a taking is when you take some property that is being used properly. But if you are using the property improperly, uh, I believe the quote is property is held under the implied obligation that the owner shall use it in such a way as not to be injurious to the community, which is a fancy way of saying you can use your property lawfully, but when you use it unlawfully, you can be subject to penalties, abatement action, etc. So if I go to the store and I buy Sudafed, that's a lawful use of property. I can use it to, you know, cure my cold or, or to cure the symptoms. Uh, but if I turn that Sudafed into meth, or I intend to turn it into meth, that is unlawful, and the police can seize that, even though I bought it legally. So that's the injurious use of property. And in this case, what that means is taking a piece of trash, a, a deteriorating uh, piece of wood that could lead to rodent harborage and infestation. If you leave that out for too long, it can cause a public safety or, or health risk to the rest of the neighborhood. So the city is right and, and right in exercising its police power to remove that trash. Uh, and you also have, and I'll go over this very, very briefly in the Rufo case. The Rufo case was about the uh, windows and doors ordinance. Uh, sorry, let me, right, right here. Uh, the Rufo case was about the windows and doors ordinance, which is a different part of the same property maintenance code. But the court did say that on its face, the entire property maintenance code is an exercise of the city's police power, meaning that it is not a taking. It is a proper use of our ability under the law to regulate public health and safety. And that also obviously applies here to removing trash. And thank okay. you. I'll stop sharing my screen. Mr. Cohen, I do have I one question for you. Uh, yes. let's, let, let's assume that Mr. Ulatowski is correct and the, the cabinet is metal. Does that change your position in terms of the taking and the need to remove it? Well, um, for the one thing, I don't believe it's metal. I think it's kind of, it is obvious from the photographs that it is made. But I'm wood. asking a different question. If it but were metal. You're right. If it were metal, I would actually say the city still has the right to remove it as trash because it it has an apparent look that it is a an organic material that would rot. So it's it's basically the city has the right to clear out what could become, what not what is, what could become a rodent harp bridge or a pest infestation. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Yudotas, any final words that would be helpful for us making a decision yeah. in this matter? Can we have Ms. Lustig testify to whether it's metal? Can we have the cleanup crew who actually picked it up and removed it? to testify that it's metal since Mr. Cohen's case is based on wooden and Mr. Higgins case is based on uh, that he testified that it is wood without seeing it. And can we have those uh, gentlemen uh, testify? No, we're gonna make a decision tonight uh, oh, now okay. in terms of this matter. Right. And uh, Mr. Yutowski, you, you've asked a question but now you, you're speaking over me when I'm trying to respond to your question. The okay. court recorder cannot record what's being said is two people are speaking at the same time. I'm sorry. So it's whatever our decision is, whatever our decision is tonight, you have every authority and ability to appeal this decision, whether if it goes in your favor or not, you can appeal the decision. Uh, and you can go to common police court or take to, even to a higher authority should you choose. Okay. Uh, so I, we, we want to hear I gave I'm giving you the opportunity as a final word. Do you want to make an argument in terms of uh, it, that would help convince us of what our decision should be. Uh, just, uh, just one thing. If you, if I, I don't know who to ask, if you could direct me in the right direction, since uh, you you've seen a lot of this stuff. Um, in the situation of uh, removing a tenant's property without their permission within a small, smaller time period than I can get, how how do I comply in these situations? You should uh, talk to your lawyer. Anybody? You should talk to your lawyer because that's lawyer. legal advice. Yes, that's legal advice. Okay. We are not in a, in a position to give you legal advice. No, I, I understand, but the city gives me a certain amount of time to remove a tenant's property, and I run into this problem all the time. The only way I 
can rectify these properties is if if uh, I got in touch with the inspectors and get an extension to rectify these problems. But uh, that's it's, it's all good. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I respect all your uh, advice and uh, thank you for hearing me out and uh, and um, hopefully somebody can help me. Okay. Uh, anything else of anyone? Do we have a? I'm sorry to take more time. A brief executive session. Okay. Sure. Yes, let's we we'll go off the record uh, for about five minutes. We'll be back in a moment. Then, uh, Ms. Rob, thank you so much. I think, thank you all for your patience. Uh, we're going to call the vote on HA 2022-000911-4813 Alcott Street, Walter Ulatowski, City of Firm. Uh, thank you. Muted, Mr. Pincus. Yep, yep, yep. City of Firm. City of Firm. City of Firm. City of Firm. Thank you very much. That's the vote on that one. Mr. Wade, what do we have next? Okay. Have a nice one. Thank you. I had um, case 24, Eric at Cicini was just having a little bit of technical difficulty. So in the mean, while he was running that breakout room, I asked her and her city solicitor to uh, go in breakout room two to see if they could come to a resolution. In okay. the meantime, we have case 26 and case 32. Case 26, hearing appeal number HA 2022-002241-4543 Teasdale Street, Vital Chatelier, C-H-A-T-E-L-I-E-R. No one in the waiting room under that name. Service was made, and I don't remember seeing that name throughout the day. Okay, who's representing the city? Uh, good evening, Chairman Woodson, Mary Costello on behalf of the city of Philadelphia. Okay, what is your preference? Uh, we would ask for a city of firm for failure to appear then. Okay, already, what time do we have, Mr. Pincus? 6.09 p.m. 6.09. 6.10. 610. Okay, 6 thank you. Already, uh, we will then poll the board for HA-2022-002241. 4543 Teasdale Street, Vital Chantelier. City Affirm Non Appearance. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, Ms. Wade, what do we do thank next? You, thank you, members of the board. And just one more note um, for the previous case that I had uh, that was for. Um, 2547 South Broad Street, HA 2022 00964. I just wanted to make sure that I moved to have the city's exhibits entered into the record. That was exhibits A through C. Okay, so moved. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, have excuse support? Uh, it depends on which case you were for. Uh, the case that was just uh, mentioned. Uh, yes, uh, as far as the board is concerned, yes, you may be excused, Ms. Costello, unless you need it for something else. You're muted, Ms. Costello. I do not, Chairman Woodson. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Have a good evening. Thank you. Take care. Okay. All righty. Mr. Yeah, Wade. That brings us to case 32. There was a little bit of confusion. Mr. McSherry uh, stated earlier in the executive session that there it was previously heard, but there, there was one appeal for a landlord and one for a tenant. And this matter, I believe, was continued. I'll read it into the record. And then Mr. Um, Excuse me, I, I'm, I'm the one who brought it up, and I do have continued 90 days. Is that what you have, Mr. Wade? No, I had it continued in, I had it continued in um, on one three, but I didn't, I didn't have a 90 day continued. Okay. All right. Um, well, but Ms. Mr. Reuter will hopefully provide some, uh, a little bit of clarity now. H A, uh, uh, appeal number 32, H A 2021. 002-483-2304 East Allegheny. Iftikhar Chaudhry. Iftikhar Chaudhry. I-F-T-I-K-H-A-R-C-H-A-U-D-H-R-Y. Okay, thank you. Mr. Rotter, are you representing the city in this matter? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, I would simply rather the, the, this has a very complicated background along with a related case, and uh, it's still a little bit confusing. However, 
so long as the board administration can verify on the record that the uh, this today's appellant uh, did receive notice uh, that this hearing would be held today, we would simply uh, ask that the matter be marked city affirmed for failing to appear. Okay, Mr. Wade. His appeal stated 1206 Crisp, Crespo Lane, Ben Salem, PA, and notice was sent 228. 2023 to to that address. Okay, does that satisfy your your question, Mr. Rodder? Well, I mean it it right because the 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 appellant did not provide an email address that I'm aware of. Therefore, uh, all we had was the property addresses, and that's all the board had is the address that the appellant okay. put on the appeal. So we would ask. Um, if they got notice, it's because uh, it's been verified that the notice was sent to the only addresses that were provided. I would ask that the city be aff uh, be affirmed for the appellant's failure to appear. Okay, thank you. Time, Mr. Pincus. Um, before I do that, I have one question. Yep. The violation notice appears to have been issued to Bruce Weinstein at, at the ad address. That's correct. Uh, Mr. Weinstein had been the pri prior owner of the property uh, during uh, after that violation was issued. The property transferred to the person who is the today's appellant, Mr. Chaudhry. Um, so, and and that was uh, we actually the city he, he even provided the city with verification of the change of ownership. So yeah. Um, so, so, so the proper party did receive the notice, is what you're saying that received uh, copies of the and the final violation notice uh i'll just make an offer of proof uh would was sent uh to the tenant uh which is a different person who is involved in the other appeal and mr chaudhry okay yeah. thank, you. thank you okay the time time, time is 6 14 p.m 6 14 p.m okay we will pull the board on ha-2021-002483 2304 East Allegheny Avenue, Iftkar Chaudhry. City affirm non appearance. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Wade. Thank you. We go back okay, to 24. I'll... Thank you, sir. 24 is our final case. Let me let me get them out of the breakout room. Okay. Um, I, 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 I see that our inspector uh, for my case, Mr. Conaway, is still here, so uh, I, I, he can leave. Yes, he's authorized. Yes. I mean, he, he can leave as soon as he, one of he likes. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Mr. Chair, they're they're close to an agreement. They just want the inspector in for one moment. Is that okay? Good. Just Kenny, uh, here. I see a phone, but I don't see an image. She was yes, having problems. Your Honor, I am, I'm having problems connecting. I've been trying to connect since 1245. This is the first time I've ever had to connect on a meeting virtually. I literally have been trying, and I'm having issues. So is there any way that, I don't know how to ask you this, but is there any way we can still proceed with this? Well, and yeah, Miss, I've been asking Miss Gals to comment on it. We did, um, in the breakout room, we were able to reach an agreement um, 
about this uh, case to affirm the the violations and give a uh, Miss Kachini a ninety day stay of enforcement. So if okay, well let's do this. I just need her to swear. I need just to swear in, and also to confirm that she said she is who she says she is. Miss Kachini, I'm Kenneth Woodson, the chair of the board. Uh, raising your right hand. Uh, do you swear or affirm that you are in fact uh, Erica Caccini, uh residing at I address twenty? Uh, you residing at address twenty seven forty four Mifflin Street. I absolutely, do. absolutely do, Your Honor. Okay, is your name the only name on the deed? Yes, it is. Okay, already. Just one more thing: Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you give today be the truth to help you God? I do. Okay, thank you. Now, Ms. Scales, Ms. Scales, uh, you put on the record that there's an agreement be uh, between the parties for city yes. affirm and 90 day stay of enforcement. That's correct. Okay, Ms. Caccini, do you agree with that? I do agree, and okay. I appreciate Ms. and Ms. Square for helping. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll pull the board then for HA 2022 002278 2744 Mifflin Street, Erica Caccini. Uh, city affirm 90 day stay of enforcement. City affirm 90 day stay of enforcement. City affirm with a 90 day stay of enforcement. City affirm with a 90 day stay of enforcement. City affirm 90 day stay of enforcement. Thank you so much. I think that resolves this matter. Ms. Caccini, have a good evening. Your case has been taken care of. Thank you, Your Honor. Is Ms. Style still available on the phone? Yes, I can give you my contact information. Miss Styles, that's why I was waiting because I remember you had mentioned that. Yes. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Thank yes. you, Your Honor, as well. Yes. I'll give you my email. It's Amy A M Y. Amy with it. Yeah. A M Y. Go ahead. I'm dot Skiles. That's S K I L E S. Skiles. Okay. At Philadelphia. At philip.gov. I'm just going to repeat it. Amy dot Skiles, S K I L E S, at philip.gov. Is it case, case sensitive or no? All lowercase. All lowercase? Yes. Gotcha. And is it any way, are we just going to communicate through email or is there any way? Just in case of an issue or a question that I can obtain your number or no? Um, I'm not, I work remotely sometimes, so oh, email would be the best way to reach me. Got to. Okay. Amy.skiles at philo.gov. Yes, got correct. To. I appreciate you, Ms. Skiles, and um, thank you for going above and beyond to try and to get me that extension. Okay. And I appreciate have, have a good night. as well. Okay. And have a good night. Thank okay. you. Thank uh, you, everyone. Bye. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Wade, do we have anything else? No. No, I see it, Ms. Sharon Greer. Uh, She's the inspector. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. So if there's nothing else from anyone, that concludes our business for today. I don't have anything for executive session. Uh, I don't know if anyone else does. If not.